Good morning. Hello, hello to everybody. Hope everybody's doing well today. Happy Saturday. I am so excited and thrilled. Today's going to be a really great day. Um, I've never done a live stream on my channel before, so here we are. Before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me okay. I do have my microphone switched differently than what I normally do when I'm on inside the booth. So if everybody could give me like a thumbs up or something like that in the chat to let me know that you can hear me okay, that would be most excellent because it kind of makes it a lot less fun if you can't hear what I'm saying and definitely a lot more challenging <laughs> So, but anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm glad that you're here. I am Tabitha from Dreaming Tabitha. If you've never been here before, um, please feel free later on to peruse my channel for all the different kind of artwork that I do. Thank you so much for the thumbs up. I see that. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, feel free to peruse my channel later on where you can see all kinds of cool stuff that I'm working on and maybe subscribe to the channel so that you can see all the other stuff that is coming up this year. I'm so freaking excited. This is already the first step in a lot of big things that I plan to do. And in my version of big things are maybe small to other people, but I'm just excited. Look, I'm just, I'm just giddy. I really am. <laughs> and I'm just so happy that a bunch of you are already here. Thank you so much for your support. I genuinely appreciate it. It's so awesome. So today is going to be the first and hopefully a line of different streams where I will teach YouTubers how to paint, looking for some other people that be interested in this process as well. And just a fun place to hang out where we can have some wholesome entertainment and uh, just that Saturday morning good vibes, you know? And a lot of people think that, you know, well, maybe I can't paint because of reasons. And that's just nonsense. So to give you a little bit of background on myself that I, uh, I do, of course, artwork, but I also do it as a job. I am an art instructor to children virtually through a platform known as OutSchool. And so from ages three to 18, kids can learn all kinds of fun stuff. And so if you have kids that are interested in learning how to paint with acrylics, which is predominantly what I use, unless I start to venture out and use some oil paints, um, you can look me up and uh, you should be under Dreaming Tab Thumb, pretty consistent. Um, and you can sign your kids up. I usually teach kids between the ages of nine to 16. And I have a wide variety of different things, whether it's Disney princesses, Star Wars, woodland creatures. I even have a class on how to paint your own lightsaber. And we don't just do paintings, but we also learn how to paint right and why we're painting so i'll teach you thing teach kids things about composition value why we place the light source one way and little tricks on how to manipulate the acrylic paints to do just exactly what we want and of course you can find me on social media and different places here and i do make prints of my stuff available on etsy should you feel like you need to go on a shopping spray i mean i would appreciate it <laughs> but anyway <clears throat> Here. And again, just thank you so much for being here. I have a very special guest in the background. So the way that we're going to be doing this is that I'll be introducing them and then we're going to just kind of chit chat a little bit here and there whilst we paint. And it's going to be super fun. And I don't know this person's experience when it comes to painting because, you know, everybody comes from different backgrounds and whatnot. But Either way, anybody can paint. I totally believe that, and my muse absolutely believes that. And there's no secret to this. Anybody can paint. Anybody can paint. All you need is a dream in your heart, a little practice. Absolutely. Anybody can paint. Doesn't mean that you're becoming an artist. It's just a way to express yourself with some fun and all that good stuff. So anyway, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and again, thank you so much for showing up. Grab you some coffee. Grab you some coffee and make way for the one, the only, Phil TMNT. <laughs> Good morning, Phil. Let's see. It looks like you're muted. There we go. Yeah, I did that. Hey, hello there. Hello, hello there. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Yeah, so I was just saying that I don't know what your experience level is when it comes to painting. Do you have any experience in the arts? Drawing, yes, but in painting, uh, I did paint a few times in uh, back in the day. 
yeah so not most experience in uh paints well a little experience is all you need to just kind of grab it and go on again so this would be really really cool so as we all know well, some of you might not. So some of us might know. Phil TMNT, if you don't know, TMNT stands for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And when I asked Phil if he'd be willing to come on the stream and learn how to paint, I wanted to give him the opportunity to tell me what he'd be interested in learning how to paint. So naturally, he gravitated towards Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles here. <laughs> and we're going to be doing Leonardo. Yeah, these guys. He was actually one of my favorite uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles growing up. I don't know, just something about the swords and the color blue. <laughs> That's just kind of really why I enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to teach him step by step how to do this painting. And we're just going to chit chat a little bit along the way. I'm going to reorient. reorient. I can't use my words this morning. Here we go. Let me see. Try to shift this around. And again, thank you everybody for being here. So I'm going to treat this, like I said, as if it was my classroom um, when I teach the kids. So before we get too far ahead with everything. Um, oh, okay. Phil says he needs to switch out to his phone really quickly. That's totally fine. I'd, I want you to be able to, uh, to do along with this. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Do whatever you need to do. So let me just kind of bring us a little closer to our screen here, as you can see. The original picture was over here. We are going to be using stencils. Sometimes people think that stencils are kind of like cheating, but they're really not. So as you can see, I have the original picture here. And I, if you will, uh, dumbed it down. I've simplified it a little bit because, again, I didn't know what Phil's experience was in painting. And so you can see how this is still a really beautiful picture. And I like this one a lot because it has definitely a lot more of this comic book feel to it, like or cartoon feel rather to it. This is more like a graphic novel in my opinion. And so it's just kind of fun. And like I said, just simplify it a little bit, but I'm gonna be showing him how some of the details can make a really big difference. Just the tiniest de uh, details can make a huge difference when it comes to creating. Yeah. Just little tips and tricks how to amplify your artwork. Doesn't take much. I will go ahead and confess to everybody really quickly here that I, <laughs> I was so excited to get everything prepped and ready for this morning. And I'm like, we got like three, two or three minutes before the show starts. And I'm telling Phil, yeah, get this, do this. We're going to have fun, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> I forgot my own canvas. Um, isn't that terrible? So I do have some watercolor paper with me today and, um, that's going to be working just as well. So when you're first starting out, it is okay if you don't have all the fancy expensive stuff, uh, to use, right? Art isn't so much about the products you use, but the passion within. Okay. So, I mean, Whatever you have around available, whether it's a piece of cardboard, whether it's a piece of wood, you can find something to create on. The fancier products really are just when you discover what kind of techniques you use and enjoy and the, the style, all this kind of stuff. That's really where it comes down to getting the more expensive materials. But as far as actually creating art, you don't need fancy and expensive uh, equipment. I mean, for example, most of my classes, I use apple barrel paint, really cheap, pretty easy to find, or I use craft smart. When it comes to acrylic paints, I do not buy expensive stuff because I don't need to. When it comes to the oil paints, that's when you start getting a little fancier, but uh, R2 says, I'm using a paper towel as a canvas. Do you know you can create some beautiful, you, you laugh. I know you meant that as a snarky snark, but <laughs> you can actually make some beautiful artwork on napkins and paper towels be because I've done it. Not that mine was the most beautiful, but you know what I'm trying to say. Let's see, let me just kind of read some of these little comments here. Let me get Phil back up in here. And I'm back. <laughs> and he's back. Let me just read some of these things. So much, so nice to see you. I've got Edo and Rogue Disney, Stunning and Brave, Megatron, Gaming or What, TM, hello. And uh, 
trying to make sure. I saw that earlier Alasia was on. I don't know if she's still here. She said mornings are usually chaotic for them. <laughs> and uh, Marcos, oh, so cool to see you guys here. And uh, Wally World Paints, yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Well, you can also get them at Michael's or at Hobby Lobby. It's all good. Yes, and so Rogue brings up something really cool. I wonder how color will show since each screen has its range of uh, of the reproduction. Absolutely, and I always tell the kids when I teach, hello, Phil, that even, if, and I'll tell you this right now, Phil, even if your painting doesn't look exactly like mine, it doesn't need to. And in fact, I don't want it to. I like mm -hmm. to see a lot of personality come out. I like to see uh, and allow for a lot of creative liberty. Okay. So if all of a sudden we're doing something and you say, Hey, is it okay if I put a cloud up here, go for it because of the fact that you want to be able to put your own touch to it. You don't want to just create a replica of what the teacher paints. You want to be able to find your own voice in the process and all that good stuff. So anyway, let me get back to this reorientation thing here. All good. So we're going to go over our equipment. Of course, you are going to need a surface area to paint on. Whether you have an actual canvas, whether it's a canvas plank um, or one of the wrapped canvases, or like me today, I'm going to use my watercolor paper here. And uh, I noticed my camera's a little bit crooked. <laughs> and then we're going to be needing, let me put this aside for right now. A handy dandy cup of clean water and a rag to clean up any little messes or any little accidents, little happy accidents that we might make. For our brushes, I always tell people if you're going to bring your arsenal of brushes to class, separate them as we go along just to make it easier and less confusing as the process starts. So we are going to be needing a one inch flat brush if we can. This is going to be used to cover quite a bit of the surface area. Of course, this is actually my favoriteest brush to use when painting because you can do so flipping much with it and I love it. And then... Secondly, we're going to be needing a half inch flat brush, which we of course can see is slightly smaller, if not half the size of the first brush. What, what? And then last, we're going to be needing a detail brush, a very fine tipped brush here for, of course, in the name suggests the details, obviously. So real simple three brushes. I try to keep things minimal so that make it less confusing and intimidating. And then for our colors, pretty simple color scheme. Sorry for the mess all over my palette here. You can tell I used it a lot, a lot. <laughs> so we have black and white. We have the primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and then a secondary color of green. I was thinking about teaching Phil a lot of uh, color theory here <clears throat> and just in the combination of yellow and blue to create green, but I'm like, let's just save ourselves the struggle <laughs> and just go ahead and have <laughs> uh, green on here. Okay, so there we go. Black and white, red, yellow, blue, and green. All right, let me bring this back up here and we'll get started with painting. We are not going to worry about our turtle. We are going to focus solely on our background here. And as you can see, we're creating a sunset or a sunrise, depending on how you want to look at it. I'm saying it's a sunset. It's a little bit more dramatic that way. And we're going to be starting with red that will then go into yellow. And eventually we're going to add some white for some creaminess down here at the bottom. Okay. I like to incorporate a lot of white into my colors because it, it helps it blend better in my opinion. And it just has that creamy effect to it. So we're going to be creating what's known as a gradient, right? And we'll talk more about as we go along the journey here. So put this aside. So Phil, number one, we's grabbing the one inch flat brush over here. <clears throat> Roger, Roger. Word, word. And we're simply going to come at our paint from the side, right? Now, it will it confuse you if I use my left hand when I paint? Oh, no, no. Okay. All right, because sometimes it's confusing for people, right-handed people, um, no hate or anything like that, but they're not accustomed to learning from a left-handed person. And so a lot of time my students will get confused. So we'll just, we'll figure it out as we go. But all we're going to be doing is nice long strokes. We're going to be holding our paintbrush vertically up and down, right? Like so that we can spread this across nicely. And we're just going to be going back and forth. Some good wrist action right here. 
And we are just going to go into our red paint. We never want to jam it into the paint itself because we want to maintain the shape. Just do a little backstroke into the red paint like so. Flip it over and put more red paint on there. I mean, this is just a fancy or an easy, excuse me, casual way of coating the paintbrush, right? Just putting color on both sides. And all we're going to do is just streak across the top like so. Pretty simple. We could do this. And oh, also, yeah. Phil, at any time of the, of the stream while we're painting, if you have any questions for me or you need me to repeat any of the instructions, I'm happy to do so. There are no wrong answers here, no wrong questions. Nothing is silly or, or, or insignificant. I want to be able to help you paint this. So you just tell me if you're struggling with something and I will stop and help you out. So just Roger, a nice, Roger. nice red band going across here. Like, so paint the fence, Daniel son, paint the fence. <laughs> oh yeah. I got to watch those movies again. <laughs> Such good movies. I haven't really watched them in a long time. So, um, well, while we, we can continue to talk, but we're going to bring, bring the red down um, just a little ways. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little marker of where I'm going to stop with just the red. And uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm just doing that to maybe have an idea. We are going to be doing um, some blending in this painting, which is my favorite thing to do. Uh, through the magic of two-toning, and that's just simply having two colors on the brush at one time. But for now, just kind of fill your sky up with some red here. So, yeah, I haven't seen The Karate Kid in a really long time, but I remember enjoying it immensely. But, yeah, I can't... Uh, go ahead. Oh, you're going. Oh, I was just saying, I can't really remember if I would say that, you know, one movie is my favorite versus all of them. I mean, it's been so long that I can't really remember a lot of the differences between the films. Yeah, I remember, uh, like, for, like, a month or two, Netflix had the first three Karate Kid movies on there. And then yeah. now they, had, like, after, like, two or two months, they took it down. I was, like, so sad. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that's why I think it's probably a good idea. You know, streaming is so excellent. But tangible piece uh, uh, copies, you know, of the films seems to be the better way to go because you have to pay for all the streaming services and they don't all carry the same movie and then you have to have just this huge variety but i mean streaming is so convenient but sometimes sometimes it's not <laughs> like, <laughs> or when you're oh, looking yeah. for a certain movie and none of the streaming services have it like that sucks oh yeah that that's part of the reason why i i got like the uh the original ninja turtles uh Tr uh, movies on DVD because uh, I I don't trust Netflix or uh, Paramount Plus to keep it on all the time. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh my gosh. I mean, I know that streaming services help keep down the the amount of DVDs that we have stored away in a you know in our closets or something like that. But it I don't know. I kind of like having the DVDs. I don't know. Oh yeah, same here. And plus, now they're almost like becoming collectors, kind of the way VH VHS it was or is. They're becoming collectors items almost. Oh yeah, I remember. I I was born towards the tail end of VHSs. Mm. I miss when they were a hot deal. Yeah. Oh yeah, and you have to rewind everything, and man, the the fights that would break out if you didn't rewind the movie and you wanted to watch it later on. My goodness. Oh yeah. I, I, uh, my favorite one that I owned was the Lion King, but in French. In French? Oh, yeah. Because that's huh. my favorite Disney movie. And, uh, I'm, uh, my father, he's Haitian, so I, okay. like, he can't speak French. And so I, since I, like, watched that movie, like, thousands of times, I, uh, will, uh, quote each line in English just to seem more impressive to my uh, father. Well, ain't you fancy? Nice. 
Um, Phil, I think if I'm not mistaken, you are using a slightly smaller brush than what I'm using, correct? Yeah. Okay. So I would assume then that you're not to the point that I am. Uh, kind of close. Okay. Oh, and I see you have gone the vertical route instead of the horizontal route, which is excellent. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're going to have more of a poster-like feel to you than, um, than mine per se, because posters tend to be vertical. So that's cool. All right. You keep going with that. Spread out the paint. Um, I, let me see what some people are saying. Let's see. I drunk 3 PO. Oh, hello. So we are painting this today. If I can get this up on my camera, Phil wanted, when I asked him if he would be willing to come on the show, he wanted to paint TMNT, of course, naturally. So I'm going to teach him how to paint this today. It's going to be really, really fun. Thank you guys for coming again so much. This is awesome. I was like praying last night and I'm like, okay. No matter what happens, I'm going to have fun. It's going to be great. Uh, but it would be really cool if like seven people showed up. And then we already had like earlier, like 14 different people here. So I was like, oh, look at Jesus just knows. Like he is just the double blessing kind of guy. So <laughs> that's exciting. But yeah, hello and welcome. Sometimes it's better to just use your Xbox or your PlayStation. Yeah, this is true. <clears throat> I do use my Xbox predominantly for everything. So Oh, I use my uh, PlayStation for uh, pretty much everything. I We've never, like, growing up when my brother was still living at home and everything like that, um, we never had a PlayStation. We were always Nintendo people and then eventually transitioned over to the Xbox. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah. I've never, I've never, I've never played a PlayStation, I don't think. I mean, I've watched other people, but I've never done it myself. Um, we used to have a, the Star Wars original trilogy on VHS. My brother still does too. Um, it's it's just something magical about still having you know old pieces of cinema. I love it. And then Marcos drunk three pure. Are you painting too? He should right. I should teach him how to paint. What was it? The, the leaves blowing in the wind. <laughs> what he was saying <laughs> that one time. He did. Uh, or or uh, I do remember that he had that painting of the trees in the snow and then he had the sun up at the top and uh, the sun was a little in my no, no, no hate, no disrespect. It was a little wonky. He painted it when he was like sixth grade or something like that. But I tell you what, I saw that picture and he was like, oh, it's nothing special. But that I really loved the way this, that he painted this, the snow and the trees like it actually was really beautiful. Um, you just never know what people are able to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, Maria. Nice to have you here. Glad you're Hey, here. Maria. So, Phil, I do want to say that um, when it comes to our background here, you can see some of the streaks in the back of my painting here. And oh, so I'm sorry, Jay. Eighth grade, not sixth grade. <laughs> but um, you can see some of the streaks in the background here. So if yours is not perfectly smooth, that is totally fine, right? This is an optional thing where um, it just creates a different feel, a different vibe at the end of the painting, right? So if it's perfectly smooth, just nice, cre crisp and clean and all that stuff, that's fine. But because we are doing kind of an edgy character standing on the precipice of whatever, um, his destiny, I think it's kind <laughs> of neat to have a little bit of the streaks in the sky because it looks a little more grungy. And also, it kind of looks like clouds without having to make the extra effort to put clouds into the sky. So I just want to throw that out there for you as you're painting along. The other thing is, too, just remember that our background is only meant to enhance our character. It is not the main focus of our painting today, right? So, right. Um, and I'm not saying you're going too slow. Please don't misunderstand what I'm oh, trying yeah. to say. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. It's what I tell my students as well that of course our background is supposed to to help tell the story right it's the supporting cast if you will but we don't want to spend so much time on it that we take away the effort of doing the main purpose because if you make the background look too fantastic it actually is quite the distraction from the main purpose of the painting so um we're also doing a gradient which while you're painting and filling that up 
Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a gradient, which is just a color that transitions into another color, into another color and such and so on. Like a rainbow, you have two colors on opposite sides. They gradually meet in the middle to create a gradient. Um, there, <laughs> we could get really technical about, about ombre, fades, all that stuff. But this is what we're creating. So we're creating colors that go in. So fading, just since Phil's still painting, is quite different from a gradient, right? We tend to say that one color fades into another. Not exactly. So a fade is when one color goes into or out to nothing. Kind of like um, when men get those haircuts, right? And it's a fade. It's called a fade because it's less and less hair that a bear basically goes into nothing. And that is what a fade is. So it would be as if I would start gradually adding um, white to this until you saw no more pigment. That would be a fade. So it's a misconception when people say, well, yellow. I say it's a misconception. It's it's one of these technical things that the common everyday person doesn't care about. But, you know, when you want to get more into art and things like that it makes a difference. So we don't really want things to fade into one another. We're actually making a gradient where they blend. Fading and blending are two different things. So we are blending two different colors into one another, but we are not fading them into one another. Just throwing out some information, do with it what you will. You don't have to listen to me. I'm nobody as special or important. But anyway, you let me know, Phil, when you get a pretty good amount of red in your sky. And it's also up to you since you're painting vertically, how much oh, yeah. red in your sky that will determine the different time of day right so if you want it to be darker you know the sun is going down further than mine that's totally fine again use your creative genius here use your inner instincts you know what looks good to you so if you want to have more in the sky i'm just here to kind of guide you and show you so if oh, you want to have a darker theme you totally can oh yeah i think i got uh you know for it for now you got enough red? Okay, because red is a very dominant, if not one of the most dominant colors out there. So what I'm going to do, because acrylic paint does tend to dry quickly, this next portion I might go through a little quickly just so you can see, but I will slow down also as it goes. So two-toning here. We're going to leave all the red on our brush, right? For our background, we're not going to clean any of the paint on our brush. What I'm going to do is flip my brush so that I get just the corner of my paintbrush in my red, like so, and then flip it over and put yellow on the other side, like this, kind of like I put mustard on there. Yeah. <clears throat> and what I want to do when it comes to blending is that I want to make sure that the red is touching the previously used red. It's harder to blend like so with the yellow touching it went this way. And I'm just going to streak across like this. And obviously that's not really blended. I'm sorry, you can't really see the yellow. Let me get a little bit more here. It's not really blended, but if I go over it back and forth like so and kind of work it back into the red, we're going to have a smoother transition of color. Oh, that looks cool. Right? So fun. Hey, Kaylee. Hey, Kaylee. It's good to see you. Thank you for coming. And so the more you go back and forth, the nicer it's going to look. But again, if you kind of want that grunge feel, uh, feel ah, <laughs> get my word out, uh, feel, then um, you can kind of leave it streaky. That's up to you. Let me play around with this. Typically, when I blend, I like to have as nice a blend as possible. But there are times when, when that is just not what is needed. Just kind of play around with it back and forth. Put the yellow back up in the sky, up in the red, wherever. And just use these nice long back and forth motions to really see what happens. Where is Phil's oh, art? Yeah. That That's cool. what I want to see. Well, we don't have quite the sophisticated setup. I'm hoping that as we go along, Phil will be willing to show us what he has created. That will be up to him. Hopefully at the end, he will lead, lead, uh, let us see what he has finished because that would be the whole point of today. Some people get a little nervous about showing their artwork to other people because we feel like maybe it's not that great. But I'm sure it will be fantastic. And so just bounce back and forth, Phil, between red and yellow. You'll be creating orange. 
and just try to smooth it out, see what happens. Roster, roster. And you guys can expect me to uh, see, uh, I mean, can't expect me to show you guys uh, mm -hmm. uh, my painting. And I see that, Jay, <laughs> me eating paint. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's been really humbling in this journey of becoming an art teacher because there is a time frame that you you need to abide by, right? And so when it comes to blending and things like that, when I would first start teaching the the students that I worked at the um, at the studio and then now teaching myself, this doesn't really represent my my full talent right and so some of you have followed my journey and seen some of my art pieces and so you know what i'm i'm able to do so it is really humbling when in something like this and i can see little imperfections and things that i don't like but i have to progress because i have to be able to make this relatable to the students and um and not make them feel like their painting is less uh beautiful than and interesting than mine because it's just it's so funny because when you watch people like bob ross right the man the myth the legend that <clears throat> and phil what we're doing we're just going to bring these colors down a little bit let me just you know mention that we're just going to be using less and less red leave it in the brush but um oh so start, use a bit less red as we go mm -hmm. down as we start oh. coming down start using less red so that we get a little bit of a, more of an orange color and eventually it'll transition into a really beautiful yellow and then we'll add the white to make it creamier. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it is very difficult to look at your painting. And like I said, the the Bob Ross, he, he always paints those amazing pictures in 30 minutes or less, right? But there was one time and you, you gotta catch it. You, I think you have, maybe you have to be a painter or something like that to kind of catch it. There was one time where he made a little mistake and you could tell he wanted to go back and fix it like there was this moment of hesitation but he didn't because he had to keep on going and <clears throat> that's actually really difficult to do <laughs> for, for creative people because you want to be able to showcase your art but now is not really the time for me to showcase what i'm capable of doing my my mission here is to make this as easy as possible and relatable for people that don't have a lot of experience and jay i saw that about sarcasm you know just go to bed <laughs> <laughs> go to bed i'm glad you're here <clears throat> hey jt you just woke up that's perfectly fine Maria is yelling my eyes. I must have missed something. Rogue says you can paint with chocolate. You can paint with pretty much anything. I've seen so many YouTubers that paint with condiments. Really, really kind of gross. So um, we're going to go a little bit further down. I don't, again, I'm doing this ver uh, horizontally. Phil is doing his vertically. So I'm not sure at what stage of the progress he is at, but I'm going to come about to here, Phil with just mm -hmm. yellow and whatever's left over in my brush of the red before I start transitioning uh, to the addition of white. Okay. Okay. Just killing you. You can sculpt with chocolate. Yes, that's true too. I've got a fun sculpting project coming up here in like the spring or the summer. I'm super excited about, super excited about. <clears throat> I had one of my drawings of a frog get transferred to a mural in the school by a professional art teacher who came to teach the class. That's awesome. That's so fun. I want so to see Tessa do pancake art. You know, I, I have contemplated doing pancake art, Rogue. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> so you uh, painted, I'm guessing, on a regular basis then, or somewhat. Who, me? What? Oh yeah, I mean, it's my job. <laughs> So then, uh, what's your favorite thing to uh, that you've painted? Um, well, I have to think yeah, about what I have to think about what I've painted. <laughs> um, well, because it's showcased on my shelf, naturally, it's one of my favorites. Is the painting I did, the crossover, character crossover of Gina Carano and Elizabeth Bennett. Um, oh, yeah, that's really that cool. That was just such a fun experiment that, 
I don't know. I enjoyed the process as much as I enjoyed the outcome. And that's what's really important in art. Uh, people take it too seriously. And I know it's meant to be taken seriously in some respect. However, when you're especially when you're first starting, but even if you're a professional, what's really important about art more than the outcome, you need to enjoy the process. Okay. You need to be able to look at it. And for me, I love watching the way the colors transition into one another. It mesmerizes me. Blending is something that I really try to focus on in all of my art pieces. Um, I don't know. It's just fun to me. And I think the magic of what a de what, what the simplest change in alteration in color what it can do for an entire picture. It's just amazing. Um, but yeah, enjoy the process more than the outcome. Um, another painting that I, I really am proud of and that I, I, I can't say it's my, it's kind of sad. I can't say it's my favorite because I, I do notice all the imperfections, but my friend Brooke, when I painted her as the Phoenix out of the ashes, mm. I was, I was so happy with how her face turned out and the phoenix behind it that that's just one of my favorite i've got a new project of her coming this year as well that i'm really excited about as well it's just it's so tedious the thing about blending is it takes so long <laughs> to get it to where i want it to be that a lot of times i don't even want to start because i know it's going to take forever but i'm really looking forward to that she's getting married this year and i'm so happy for her and uh it's just been such an honor to let that she's let me follow her along in her journey and open up about it and that I can express it through art. Oh, yes, that's amazing. Yes, Mrs. R2. Uh, I am so happy. So little, little Spidey. God bless him. Little Spidey sent me. This beautiful piece of artwork right here. It's so awesome. What a beautiful little Boba Fett. I mean... I'm really impressed. When I got this, I cried. <laughs> I did. It came with a note on the back for me. And I don't know. It's just beautiful. I love that. It's really touched my heart. And I'm like, that needs to go. That needs to go on the shelf. <laughs> I right. see. Uh, I saw one person saying, show us what you got, Phil. So. Yeah, show us, Phil. Hang on. Let me get him big over here. Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh, and you've got the little swooshies in there, too, that look like clouds. Kind of remind me of the Lion King. Yes, yes. Good. Okay, so excellent. We're at kind of the same point in the background here. So still leaving. If you still have a, a lot of red in your brush, what I recommend doing, because we're trying to transition a little bit out of the, the orange and the yellow, do not rinse your brush. We don't want all this, all this goodness in here gone. But if you have too much red in your brush, just wipe it off the excess on your towel. So that way it still helps with the blending. You don't want to get rid of all of the red. Right. <laughs> Phil is painting the different stages of bacon. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you get your, your bacon, Phil, if it's yellow. I don't want to know. <laughs> different stages of bacon, Matt. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Peyton Nate, welcome. Hello. How hey, are Nate. you? Oh, and also in true fashion, where is it? Oh, I know. Never mind. I already mentioned that before. I'm sorry. Yum bacon is what JT says. Yep. So I'm going to just reapply my yellow and then dip the other corner into white. And of course, making sure that my yellow and my yellow match up. So just like so. Nice little piece of taffy looking there. Everybody's talking about bacon now. And then I'm just the same process. It's the same steps over and over again. I'm just going to spread it here. And now we're just going to get all that beautiful creamy goodness that white brings to the table here. My favorite. I love incorporating white in everything. Okay, Rogue, I see. Turmeric coated bacon. Yeah. Oh, I bet that was mighty tasty. My neighbor is, I've mentioned this to several people. My neighbor is Iranian and she will cook food all the time and bring it over and turmeric and um what's it called saffron always in her dishes it's just so so good oh i bet so good <clears throat> nice long strokes here always always 
try to smooth out the paint. You don't want to have it too thick on here. That way it doesn't take quite as long to dry, even though acrylic paint tends to dry very quickly. Especially if you're like me and painting on watercolor and not the canvas that you intended to paint on. You need to make <laughs> me a mod. I don't know how to do that. How do you do that, Jay? <laughs> Phil, how do you do that? Oh, uh, so what you want to do yeah. is uh, <laughs> how to make someone mod is pretty much uh, I'll quickly type in, hey, like, for example, you want to go over like my name or drunk 3 po same or whatever, and it should give you, it's no oh, on YouTube. You have to do it on the YouTube end. You want to oh. go over a uh, set person's name, whether it's my name or your drunk 3 po's name, and uh, it will give you like five or three dots. There's mm -hmm. gonna be three dots. And through that, you should be able to make a, whoever you choose mod. Okay. I believe I have done it. It tells me I have. We shall see. <laughs> so, meanwhile, while technology figures itself out, I am going to continue painting because I need to focus, Leonard. Focus. Focus. <laughs> well, as she's uh, generally in her inner Leonard, as she's focused, I got to say, it was uh, really awesome to um, finally get to, like, verbally talk to you uh Jay, it was like, oh, yeah. was on my bucket list uh, to like one day uh, um, be able to like verbally talk to you and hang, hang out. And uh, we'd definitely love to do that again sometime. Because you, you are honestly like, I know you say I'm no one special, but you're honestly one of my uh, heroes. Oh. Reminds me of a Bonnie Tyler song. I'm holding out for a hero. <laughs> but he's got to be strong he's got to be i can't remember all the words <laughs> you know the first time i heard that song was in shrek 2 really yeah one of the favorite godmother you sung that song i said oh that's I, I right said, there are other versions of this song what oh phil that's so sad oh my gosh yeah bonnie tyler <laughs> so here we go coming down to the end of it Coming to the finish line. Got my little streaks and things like that going in here. Oops, too much yellow. So I pat it out on my towel. Now the bottom portion, I don't necessarily want to be too fancy fancy. I'm not too worried about some of the stuff going on here because it will get covered up eventually. For those that might be new here, I'm teaching Phil how to paint TMNT, the Leonardo edition. And so we are going to be covering it up over here. And also the thing is too, Phil, if there's anything in your sky that's kind of, eh, you're not too happy about, you could always kind of cover it up with your turtle. So it's all good. The pro that's what the professionals do. So, you know, just cover it up. I always tell the kids, I'm like, when you don't like what you've painted, the professionals just cover it up with a cat, with a cloud, you know, a happy little cloud. <laughs> so. Oh, Roger, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> or stars or something, something to distract from what was unintentional okay and there's a life lesson in there is the fact that if you've made a mistake if something's not going exactly the way you thought of and you think everybody's only focusing on your little mistakes there then do something that outshines your mistake and nobody will remember it and if they do well then don't worry about them just kick them out of your life because you don't need people like that <laughs> that sounds I, don't know like that's, a... I don't know if that's what jesus would do but <laughs> It's what Mr. Miyagi would do. There you go. Let me try to get this going here. Too much red. All right. I need to I need to calm down. I need to. It's kind of weird painting at this angle too, because I'm having to look at this camera, make sure I have this over here, and then you know. So all right. If I keep messing with this, the reds are coming out of my brush. There we go. So, yeah. I do have a little bit of a hard edge right here, but I'm not too worried about that. Sometimes what I like to do, and when you're done with your background, by the way, Phil, whenever you're done, we will no longer need this brush. Um, perhaps at the end, 
but at this moment, when we're done with this guy, we won't need it. So I am going to be putting it into my handy dandy cup of water, pressing down just slightly to put a little pressure on the edge of the brush and swizzle it about to, of course, make a murky concoction that I think they might be selling on the Galactic Star Cruiser when you go. So um, I'm just going to put that over here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like to do is take my stencil to help me kind of focus you know, on the main portion and kind of hover it over my background and say, oh, just looking at that, my sky is not as awful as I think it might be, right? Perception, like stop focusing on, on the things that happened in the past, focus on the future here. This is what's gonna be really, really awesome. So put that there. I don't know what oh, you guys yeah. are talking I, about. Wait, they're talking about being big. I don't understand. I'm not going to engage in that conversation because they're dudes. So, <laughs> as a dude, I am where I try to behave. Please, I appreciate <laughs> that. That's right. We. <laughs> as this is why you're one of my favorite uh, "quote unquote" sisters, Kaylee. You can send me the six grand and I'll send you the same murky drink from South America. <laughs> Maria says it's right. Jay says, wow, that grammar. I don't know if he's talking to me or somebody else. I don't know what I said. Probably, probably me. But yeah, this is what I got so far. We're going to look at what Phil has to offer. Oh, it's so pretty. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, thank Let's you. Thank it. you. Yes. Yes. It's going to be so cool. So we're going to be, oh, you're painting on paper as well. Cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the thing with, uh, and hello to all of the newcomers. Thank you much, so much for stopping by. I appreciate you being here. So <clears throat> we're uh, going to let this dry completely because you do not want your stencil to stick to your paper because that would be inconvenient. Um, <laughs> very much so. So we're just going to let this dry. One way to know if your painting is dry or not is without having to touch it <laughs> would be is, is it shiny or is it a matte finish? Uh, because acrylic paint, well, any kind of paint, like anything that has moisture to it, obviously, if it is wet, it's shiny. I mean, it's just kind of how it works, right? Uh, and so if it's not, and it's got a matte finish to it, and that's one other reason why we did uh, even strokes and about um, thinly applying the paint. So that way it doesn't take quite as long to dry. But because it's paper, it will try to absorb all that moisture. So it'll be all good in the hood over here. Yes, yes. So I'm just letting some of this dry, um, especially down here on the bottom. Okay. And then there we go. So I did tell Phil to cut out his superhero over here. And then we're also removing the torso. So, exactly, Dad. Moisture is wet for those that didn't know. You know, again, I'm treating this kind of the way that I would somewhat with my students when I teach on out school. So, kind of get a vibe for what I do over there. And so, a lot of times you really have to explain the obvious. <laughs> so, um, but I've we had this removed so that it'll be easier to place things. And because uh, this can get very uh, overwhelming for somebody who's not really a uh, accustomed to painting and knowing proportions and body placement and all of that kind of stuff there. Kaylee, by the power vested in me, I grant you access. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm kind of jealous of Tavo though, because she was able to print Leonora out in color. I got him in the whole like classic black and white over here. <laughs> Well, I thought about that. I was like, okay, I have a black and white version too. And I thought it might make it easier for you if I do it in black and white, but I didn't want to. So I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> now, how big is your turtle there, Phil? Because it looked to me like it was kind of small. Oh, okay. Here we go. All right. Yeah, well, really I, know, I noticed you don't really have... Um, you don't have all the edges of your turtle cut out. You still have white surrounding it, right? Should I should I try to fix that right now? Yes. So while your background is drying, you absolutely need to get that taken care of. Um, 
Right. It's true. Rogue black and white is old school and makes you focus on shading techniques. Absolutely. Um, but I, I think that would be a little bit too complicated painting or drawing and only black and white can be, um, a little bit extreme for some people because we're so accustomed to color being able to tell us and separate our highlights and our shadows that we don't really, um, that we don't really pay attention to value, right? Darks and lights, just colors. So we'll, we'll work on that another time. Uh, R2, I'm not, <laughs> I knew Tabitha was going to tell Phil he is doing it wrong. No, he didn't do it <laughs> wrong. It was just incomplete. It's a difference. Uh, which character is your favorite uh, for Turtles? It would have to be uh, Leonardo, but Mikey is right up there. I just love how goofy he is. But I've always liked Leonardo because of the swords. Always had a thing for swords. And I do like the cover color. Um, oh, yeah, that's the main reason why I like Leo, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's go back to our little view here. Let's see what I've got over here. And again, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, I'm hoping to do other streams like this. I don't know if I want to do it by myself. I don't know how much fun that would be, but I enjoy this so far. And so I'm looking to see if other YouTubers want to, to join in and learn how to paint. And so the way the process goes, and I'll just hide Phil over there. So, so we don't have to look at him anymore longer than we need to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is, um, I like, I want to give the YouTuber the opportunity to tell me what they want to paint because it's not, it's not so much about me getting them to paint something that I want. You know, if you're going to learn something new and have fun while you do it, it needs to be something that you're interested in and that you treasure. And, um, so when I told Phil that I was thinking about doing this, excuse me, I'm a little bit crooked in many ways. No. No, that's not right. <laughs> Is that uh, I asked him if he'd be willing to do this. And then I told him he would get to have the opportunity to pick the subject matter. And of course, he picked turtles. And um, so we kind of perused the Internet. I told him to find a picture that he liked and I'll try to find something similar to it as well. And then I would just simplify it to make it easier for him to do. Um, so that's where we are here. And anybody can paint. You can be like, I don't have any experience. I don't, I don't know where to start or, uh, or my personal favorite excuse. I can't even draw stick figures. I cannot tell you how many times I've told people or I've heard people tell me that. And I just have to reply. It's like, that's totally fine because we all need a place to start. It doesn't matter if it's a dog, a house, a rose or a person. We all have to start off with the basic structure, right? You just got to start somewhere. And when it comes to doing humans and things like that, I mean, it just makes sense that we would start with stick figures anyway. That is the basic shape of human anatomy. We need a head, we need a spine and arms and legs. It is only with practice and some perseverance that we start integrating the more details like the ears and then the muscle structure and the different style of the eyes and all of that fantastic stuff. So. If you've never done it before, then you're the perfect person to start. And even if you have done it before, you can never go wrong with doing more. You only get better the more that you do something. So literally every time you put paintbrush to canvas, you are gaining XP points essentially in your life. So don't down yourself if it doesn't like look good. What it, and come, when it comes to artwork, really, what is good? As long as it look, when you're first starting out, as long as it looks like what you were going for, right? And you can recognize what it is. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Because you have to just grow and you have to learn. And there's so much, so many life lessons that can be achieved here in, uh, in artwork, in painting. And it's so exciting. And just kind of like to share all that stuff. And I need to read what people are saying. What is it? Are we doing a transfer? No, we are stenciling. Phil, have you ever stenciled before? Uh, I think so. Uh, I was in this arts program uh, for like seven years. Okay. And uh, one of them was uh, uh, printmaking and mixed media. Okay. Oh, I've done screen printing before. It's kind of fun. But um, 
Is that a dinosaur skull on the shelf? Yes. Well, dragon. It's actually got like a horn on here. There's a story behind that. I did hand sculpt all of that stuff. Um, I have to ask about stenciling because sometimes I've met kids that have no idea what I'm talking about. And back in my day, stencils were the bee's knees. Okay. So that's why I'm not. So R2, a couple of years ago, <clears throat> the year that shall not be named, um, my family and my friends, we like to go to the Renaissance Fair every year. It's like the highlight of the year. We love it. It's so fun. We get dressed up. Sometimes. Sometimes I dress up. Sometimes I don't. And it's just a fun experience, a wholesome and fun experience. So when <clears throat> 2020 showed up and everything was shut down, we couldn't go to the Renaissance Fair. And so we decided to host our own Renaissance Fair with my family and our friends, a couple of our closest friends. And we went all out. And so we wanted to have some shows and things like that. And so I decided to be um, a dragon, not a dragon tamer, but like aficionado, if you will. And so I sculpted a dragon's tooth, which I have over there. I sculpted a dragon's tooth, and then I sculpted the dragon's skull. And then I made several pieces of artwork um, for dragons. Some of the best, some of the best things I've ever done that I never thought. Like apparently, I have a thing. I'm good at dra making dragons. And um, I learned about dragons, and I basically talked to the audience about all the different kind of dragons and what they can bring to the table. So yeah, that is a dragon skull. It's so fun. Rogue says, I'll do a pancake art stream with you. That would be fun, Rogue. We'll have to, we'll have to talk. That'd be kind of cool. You, you'll probably kill it, though. I'll, I'll be like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> because in pancake art, you have to work reversed. I, my brain does not function like that. <laughs> Jay, let's get you doing a self-portrait with Tabitha. It's just eyebrows. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of dragons what's your favorite mystical creatures um my favorite mystical creature mm -hmm. <sighs> that's really tough well let's see I, I do I do really uh, admire dragons. There's so many different kinds of dragons. I would have to say sea serpent and I can't remember that. all that all that stuff that I learned. I can't even remember all their different names. But the serpentine dragons I really like, but the flying ones, like the the the, uh, the Chinese ones are really cool. And I do like the traditional ones with the wings and everything. But I am very fond of the Pegasus. Oh, the uh, Pegasus are pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not so much the Pegasus unicorn. Like, unicorns are cool and everything, too. But I just, there's something majestic and elegant about a Pegasus. And I always really enjoyed the Pegasus from Hercules. I feel like that's an underrated Disney movie. I love that movie. The combination of black gospel music combined with Greek mythology. <laughs> it's just awesome. <laughs> that's a great movie. Oh yeah, Kingdom uh that Kingdom Hearts games made me really appreciate uh Hercules even more. It's awesome. I'm an action figure. That's like that's one of my favorite scenes. Um, wow, hi, this is cool. I have to get some supplies and try myself. And you're a Stargate fan. I am. Heading to a mm -hmm. wildlife refuge to take some photos of owls, so I'll watch more later. Have a blessed day. Well, you have a great day too, Jason Disbrow. I do love me some Stargate. Uh, how is the stencil come along, Phil? Because, you know, I'm getting tired of talking. Is this clear? <laughs> Hang on. Let me make this bigger. Yes. That's pretty good. So when it comes time to do the uh, the wrap around his head with the little tendrils coming out, we'll just have to try to make those a little bit more narrow when we do um, do that. And uh, Right. That's right. So let me get a sip of my coffee here. And bring back the camera. Okay. And if you guys haven't watched already, subscribe to this amazing person that's, I guess, below me. <laughs> well, or not. You know, whatever. It's America. Do what you want. But um, <laughs> so our background should be nice and dry by now. 
If it's not, we've got problems, but it should be perfectly dry by now. Good, 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 good. So <clears throat> composition, fancy term for the placement of our items, right? So Phil, because you are doing it vertically, you get to decide where exactly you want to place him, right? Um, mm. So I like to have my little dude over here to, off towards the side and a little bit above the ground because I am going to be placing that building or whatever that precipice that he's standing on right here. So just kind of play around with where you would like to put him, where it looks best to you. No wrong answer here. There are good and better ways to do artwork. But there's really no wrong way. Okay. So just kind of figure out where I want my Leonardo character. I think he looks pretty majestic right here, if not crooked. There we go. And then we will need our handy dandy little pencil. And we want to trace around our turtle and be really tight with the details, uh, with the, the nooks and the crannies and all this good stuff, right? So what I was saying, Phil, when it comes time to doing these little tendrils here, you can see I have a little bit of white, but I don't want to have them too thick. Right. So you can always just kind of go around the edge on one side and then just kind of faux do it the other way without the stencil. So it's not too mm. wide, but whatever works best for you. I'm sure you can figure this out. You got this. I know it sounds like a cat poster, but you got to believe. <laughs> so and then you also want to do the inside of his belly here without the, the actual piece of paper. Go ahead and trace on the inside here. So. Na, 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 na. Just go for it. Let me see what people are saying. Have I ever thought about doing mixed media work? Um, do you have an idea of what kind you're referring to, Rogue? Uh, yeah, mixed there's, media there's like multiple. I think. Hmm? Sorry? There's like multiple first on mixed media, right? Yeah, well, I mean, for my limited understanding of what mixed media is, like when we learned in college, like when I was in photography class, what we learned mixed media was essentially, well, mixing your media, mediums, basically. Like if you would do, <clears throat> like, for example, we had this one lady who would do like quilting in her photography, if that makes sense. Like she would print out her photographs and then cut them up and then make them like a quilt. Oh, wow. It was really okay. cool, very different, <clears throat> you know, basically just taking different things and putting them together. But I don't know if he has a different idea of what talking about. I like to paint digital. You can delete it. Seriously, I like to use color pencils or markers rather than paint. I, I have thought about that sometimes, JT, where I think, especially with my chibis, that maybe it would be better if I invest in some software I mean, I have Photoshop and everything like that, but getting better software to do my artwork. But I like the idea of not having to be on my computer to create my artwork. I like being able to sit outside, especially, and do my artwork or on the couch or wherever. And there's also, for me, there's just something about the physical, tangible copy of something that I created. I am not dissing on digital artists at all. They have such amazing talents. But to me, there's just something quite special about being able to say with my hands. And I know, again, I know you do that with when it comes to, you know, using the mouse or using the pen and all that stuff on computer, but something, something to be said about having it in your hands, a physical copy of something that you made just as extra special and extra extraordinary to me. Um, let me try to read what people are saying. But I do do some digital stuff. Like when I put the backgrounds behind my characters and I do enha digitally enhance them when I put them onto the computer. So, I mean, like I, I kind of, that in itself is kind of a mixed medium sort of is that I do draw and color everything first uh, in the real world. And then I put it in computer and then add more stuff to it later on. I prefer oil paints and watercolors. I've never actually dabbled in watercolors, but I do love oil paints. It is a game changer. Are you using Americana acrylics? Not today. Right now I'm using Apple Barrel and Craft Smart. 
I can't wait to see the finished work for you both. I use stun I use pencils, pens, and markers, but I used to use watercolors thinking about, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so what I do when I create my chibis and stuff like that is that, of course, I draw them out, and then I use colored pencils. I use Prismacolor pencils, and then I enhance everything with Copic markers afterwards. I've been trying lately. I have a video coming out soon where I did the reverse. I've seen other people, other artists that do that. They will color everything with markers first, and then they use Prismacolor pencils or or any kind of colored pencil to enhance everything. And it works, but I've been doing it the other way for so long that it's very difficult to try it the other way because I do enjoy the way that I do it. Um, so it's just, you know, whatever your preference is, gets the job done together so I think I'm almost done here right I'll just yeah if you guys hear snoring I'm sorry it's my cat sleeping <laughs> it's all good okay there we go I've got the ghost of Leonardo here Working on the computer drains the life out of me when I'm doing art. I have to get my hands dirty. Yeah, I'm, I'm both. I love working on the computer, but there's just some things where I really need to feel it with my hands. That's why my hands are so ugly, because I have to be able to feel everything. <laughs> like when I'm doing gardening and everything like that, washing dishes, I hate wearing gloves. I mean, it, I pay the cost. The consequence thereof is that my hands are what they are, but I just can't help it. Oh, I would like, that's one thing I definitely, uh, Always said I got to get into more is uh, gardening. I love gardening. It's so wonderful. You can really learn about a lot about life from gardening. Yeah, there was this uh, couple that used to babysit me a lot when I was a kid. And uh, I would hang out with them uh, towards like my teenage years just because they were like, a second set of grandparents to me. And uh, the wife, she like loved to garden and like mm. shortly before she uh passed away she was uh they had a barn and she was they were taking down the barn and she was making a garden out of it oh it would have I, I couldn't imagine it would have been like really great if uh uh she was able to continue it well did she she actually did get to start the garden or she was preparing it she was preparing it and she started a little bit and then so there you uh, go then she gets to live on her garden will always be a continuation oh yeah sister. so do you have your your dude on here oh yeah okay so let me try to make this bigger here just a wee bit there so the thing is now phil what i recommend is keeping your stencil close by and uh, let me see. Got to head out later, everyone. Rogue, thank you so much for coming by and stopping by. It means the world. Thank you. Um, have a nice day. You're <laughs> but so what we're going to do is basically draw in some of the detail that is missing. For example, like the, the knee. Uh, I can't think of the word. Oh, the these, knee knee thing. Thank you. Knee I was going to say the kneecaps, and I'm like, that's not what I'm going for. <laughs> so, so these are omitted, right? But we need to have a general idea of where they are. We can. They don't have to be perfect. We can always clean that up later on with paint. But this will give us an idea of where everything needs to be, right? So I recommend we'll start with the feet and work our way up. So even though we're going to color this up with paint, I recommend starting with this foot over here. And just go ahead and kind of add these little basically these little parentheses here that divide the toes. Because this is essentially oh, yeah. going to be like muscle memory, that even when we paint over it, we will remember it almost subconsciously from when we did it originally, and that it just kind of helps keep things balanced. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I'll try to go slow here. So you can follow along if you want to, or if you want to just go rogue and, and do it on your own, that's fine. Um, you just let me know. I'm going to start adding his little bandages here. Just like so. Hopefully we can see. So just like that. Okay. 
And I'm basically just going to work my way up the leg and then switch over here. So then on this knee thing, we've got these little indentations. Let me try to see. Right here. So we can use it as a guideline. We're just going to do a little bit of a half of an oval here. Just kind of curve it. And do the same at the top. Just follow what the picture looks like. <clears throat> Ado, I have used a airbrush before. Actually, one of my older videos, um, one of my older videos uh, on my channel is that is my Merida, my brave picture. Um, and I used airbrush for the sky and things like that. But I have come to find that I don't really prefer to use airbrush for painting, like acrylic painting and things like that. I prefer to use airbrush for food. So I've just designated my airbrush to, to baking, which is how. Ah, uh, crap. Oh, it's not me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, can 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 you? Oh, it's not me. Okay. So it's not uh. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Oh, that scared me because I thought it was me. So I, thought I was going like restart my phone. I was checking like YouTube. On my laptop, I was getting Dude, I'm just going to blame you anyway. Well, okay, fine. Then I'll just keep going. All right, so I'm going to do the other <laughs> toe over here. I'm going to do a little band-aid. Like, we're going to go a little bit faster now because I'm like, that. this can't happen. Oh, this, this little band-aid is a little higher than it needs to be. But again, we can fix that later on in, in paint. And I'm going to do his kneecap thing here. So we go in, come up, come up around. Just get a general sense of what it is. I hate when that happens with the internet. It's so blooming frustrating. Oh, as a person who has that happen a lot on their stream, yeah, it, it can be. So also in between the legs here, I would go ahead and we're not going to do all the details in there, but we need to understand where the separation comes from. So obviously I've got this uh, this peak right here. And I'm just going to come up and get it to the shell. We, we have it, or excuse me, the front portion of his chest there, just so we have that separated. Maria asks, does practice make perfect? Depends on what your definition of perfect is. And then, I don't know where you're at, Phil. I don't know if you're just going for it. Are you just copying your guy? Do you need me at all? Oh, yeah. I'm just uh, trying to copy my uh, Leo. Okay. All right. Then I'll just go for it. I wasn't quite sure where we were. Do my little Band-Aid here. So, yeah, we're just really focusing on the Band-Aid and separating the body in different, different pieces there to better help us out. Okay. I'm going to do his little fist yeah. up and around. But I hope everybody's having a good morning so far. Has everybody eaten breakfast? It's going to sound like a ridiculous question, but I'm just kind of curious when it comes to Saturdays, because we're always so busy during the week. Does everybody take time on Saturdays to make like awesome breakfasts or they just don't care or you know, I'm just curious. I had a blueberry muffin. So I'm just curious if people take the time to actually invest in their breakfast or not. Oh, that sounds great. Sadly, I don't do that. You don't do that? Okay. Well, so Phil doesn't care about his food. <laughs> I'm just really nervous about the, <laughs> the internet now. I keep checking, like freaking out. Oh, well, it'll be all right. Everything going to be all right. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. Sundays are my days. Sundays, okay. 
have to have a massive breakfast every day. I haven't eaten yet. I don't usually eat breakfast. I'm not a big breakfast person myself either. I'm kind of a twofold thing on that. I love to eat. I really enjoy food. But I hate the inconvenience of making food. So I tend to not eat as much as I should, which because I can eat a lot, leaves me very hungry, very starfished. It's it's a terrible relationship that I have with myself. So. Oh, I'm pretty much the same way. I sometimes have to like force myself to eat so I can uh, not uh, deprive myself. Yeah, it's not more. healthy living. I know, I know it's not healthy, but it's just how it be sometimes. So I've got to really focus on my my face over here. It looks terrible. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just basically getting this out here so that we can um, make it look better. This is just the gist of what we're going for. We can always make it look nicer later on. So there we go. <clears throat> Ninja is from Japan. Tabs, you and Ninja should do a stream. You are both great artists. Well, thank you, JT. That's a really compliment. I think I may have seen some of his stuff. It's really hard for me to keep up with everybody. I apologize. <laughs> I'm not, there's so many people. So then what's your uh, favorite Turtles movie? Um, <clears throat> probably the first one. I'm not a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtle person, but I would have to say probably the first one. Oh yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. The first one is, I have to admit, is the best one. Even though I, uh, I'm a, uh, my favorite one is the uh, Secret of the Ooze, just to see. Right, the you like thing. that dance number? You do. <laughs> oh yeah. And then, so at this point, then Phil too will also um, go ahead and do the inner portion of the belly. And just kind of, you can find the lines that gravitate to one another. Oh yeah, that's why. Uh, that's why I did too. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm not doing so. I am not doing the belt. Now that's something that you can add if you want to, but these little strappy things here, I'm not worried about that. I'm not adding those. I like it to be a little bit more simplified. And the thing yeah. is, too, whenever it comes to these streams, like my paintings, because I'm not, we, we, you know, have a little bit of a time frame there. They never come out exactly the same every time I do them. So it's OK if it looks a little bit off. Again, as long as it's recognizable for what it is and we can always improve it. Basically, what we're doing right now is unlocking the promise of the future, <clears throat> to put it in a very poetical way. Once you know how to do something, you can always do it again and make it better. Right. We're not necessarily. Personally, we're not necessarily aiming for a masterpiece to hang on the wall, sort of. I mean, the experience goes along with it, too. But if you ever wanted to recreate this, Phil, because, you know, maybe there's something that you don't like or you wish you would have done differently. Once you know how to do something, you can take off and make it better the next time. So. <clears throat> and then oh, yeah, I was talking. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was saying I was saying that makes sense. Sorry, nothing of importance. <laughs> You're fine. No, no, it's all good. No, I'm just, you know, just preparing you for the future. How's the stencil going along? Doing okay? You taking your time? Oh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Look, I'm taking my time, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm laying the groundwork. <laughs> <laughs> Got to lay down that groundwork for sure. So I'll just go ahead and walk us through, talk us through the next portion of the painting. So that way we're mentally prepared before I show it to you. Is that we're going to block out the green of the body. 
so that we can help separate everything else and it should be really easy to fill in. Um, we will be using our half inch flat brush. We will be basically kind of back and forth between stuff because um, this brush, especially if you're not experienced with it, can be very difficult to get into the, the smaller areas. So we're just going to try to carve out some time here and um, excuse me, that's not the term of phrase I wanted to use. But anyway, we're going to go with it. We're just going to basically get as much done as possible with this brush in the larger areas with the green. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is it bad that I like never really seen a full episode of Friends? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were you looking for a different answer? I'm sorry. <laughs> And that's like one show that I've always been interested in watching and but never like really got around to it. But I, I've heard like good reviews. I've I've finished it several times. Like watched all was it 10 seasons several times. So I Phoebe Buffet is my favorite character. I love her. She's just crazy funny. All that good stuff. Where are you at in your stencil, Phil? Just so I can kind of have an idea. Do you have most of it finished, or? Uh, I also oh, mind uh, what I uh, did. I don't know how well you can see. Leo. No, that looks great. Oh, this is this is going to be a very, uh, very epic kind of poster for you. There's a lot going on in this picture, and um, because he's also really high up, so instead of mine, where we're having kind of a. Um, a small little slant for him to stand on, it's going to be more of like a mountain, I think would be the best thing to go with with yours, which is going to be super cool. Oh, thanks, now, Kaylee. Yeah. Your uh, <laughs> deck, Smelly Cat, that's right, Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat, what are they feeding you? Um, that episode is so funny. Of course, Phil won't know what I'm talking about, I don't think. But Dax will, I'm sure. I'm guessing. And when she's in the studio recording Smelly Cat and those backup dancers pop out from nowhere and they're just like going. <laughs> it's so funny. Unless you know, it doesn't sound funny probably. Now, Phil, your turtle is slightly smaller than mine. So I don't know if the half inch brush is the way to go for you. You'll have to judge that for yourself. If it's too difficult, then just stick with the detail brush and get that done so just let me know when you're ready to put down the paint oh will do roger and uh, roger oh roger roger <laughs> you say that a lot and so it's like kind of your call sign there roger roger yeah i inadvertently uh, uh say that a lot because of uh well if you guys know me i'm a huge star wars nut especially of like the uh prequels and the original trilogy so i uh, say a roster roster a lot and more of my best friends that I've known since I was 11 they were saying really? Star Wars? Really? <laughs> oh come on it's Star Wars what do you mean? Everybody loves well not everybody everybody should but they don't love Star Wars um, Ado asks have you used a wet palette to keep the paint fresh and keep it from drying? No I haven't um, usually when I teach my classes and things like that, they're only about an, they range from an hour to an hour and a half long. And so I, I don't, I don't want to say I work quickly, but I try to prioritize my time with my students so that my paint, my acrylics don't really dry out. So far, mine are still doing really good. If I maneuver my palette, they still run. They're still really liquidy. Um, so I'm not having an issue with congealing thus far. And we're getting pretty close, I say, to the ending since we're working on our turtle here. And so um, I'm not going to necessarily have too much of an issue with it. It also really just depends on the company and their formula. I have noticed that my white, uh, even though it's the same company as everything else that I have here, minus the Craftsmart, that this is a much thicker formula than the rest of the paints even though it's not meant to be. There's nothing else added to this, which is very peculiar and very irritating a lot of times too. So, so are we ready to rock and roll? Oh yeah. 
Okay, so like I said, it's up to you whether you want to use the half inch brush because your turtle's slightly smaller. I am going to go ahead yeah, and dip. I, I realized I made him like two. Uh, sorry, <laughs> that was all. That's my bad. <laughs> you did what? Sorry. I made him to like a bit. Sorry, that was on me. Oh, you can always fix things. You can always cut paper. Whatever you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of get a little bit of paint, do a little backstroke on my paintbrush here with some green, a mean green fighting machine here. And I'm just going to start with the toes. And like I said, I'm going to be covering up these little indentations here, of course, because the paint will do that. But it just, it's something in my brain that will tell me later on that, you know, I got it. So here we go. I'm just going to put down some paint, use some nice, simple, smooth strokes here and very carefully get close to the line. We are going to be doing a little bit of outlining. So if you make a little mistake, that's OK. No mistakes, just happy little accidents. Let me make this happy little video. accidents. All right. Oh, thanks, Maria. Uh, hope, hope to see you soon. Yeah. Bye, Maria. Thank you for coming. Here we go. And just take your time and maneuver. So you'll notice that I've painted over here like so with my wrist. But then in order to get closer to the edge, I'll flip my paintbrush like so to just kind of work the angles here. Oh, yeah. So just kind of rotate the brush however you see fit. Just get it in there. I have to say, this is like uh, one of my uh, favorite art projects that I've uh, done. Well, we are doing something pretty different. Painting online, letting everybody watch us. It is pretty fun hanging out with everybody this Sunday morning. And that's just kind of what I, or excuse me, Saturday morning, kind of wanted to do is just, just kind of find some people to hang out with. And, um, you know, it just reminds me of, like I said, I've said before and I've advertised, you know, wholesome TV on Saturday mornings, but this is even better because you're hanging out with friends and it's just amazing community. And it's amazing what technology has been able to offer us. I tell many people that technology is such a blessing and is such a curse, depending on how you use it. And for moments like this, gosh, what a blessing to be able to hang out with people from all over the world, apparently. Um, watching other people paint some people who have no idea what they're doing some people have a little bit and just just really fun i really i really enjoy this so i hope to continue doing this to find some more youtubers that might be interested in hanging out and uh learning something new because it also helps me too because of the fact that um the fact that you know like i said before that humbling experience where <laughs> This might not be up to par with what my standards are with paint. It's not up to my standards, you know, but it's humbling just to try to help somebody else. This is not about me showcasing my talents. This is about me helping somebody in the community <clears throat> be a better version of themselves, like help them gain a life skill, really, and maybe unlock a hidden talent and also to just provide some a fun hangout spot for other people. Oh, yeah. I think people will uh, follow because you're an amazing person. Uh, bye, Ada. I'm glad you were able to come. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah. See you, Ada. And thanks again that for that. Uh, 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 what's it <laughs> Use called? Use your words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would help you. But first of all, that you did of me. There you go. That first oh, little painting. Wow. That was true. That was really cool. Yeah, Ada is very gifted and artistic man as well. He does some awesome stuff on his channel. Check out Fabworks if you want to see some really amazing Star Wars uh, builds um, on his channel. It's just fantastic. And there are other people in the community that do amazing work. Oh, yeah. Like uh, his uh, <laughs> painting on me. They did, and uh, your chibi Bill, uh, Jedi Master Bill, the ketchup and the pizza was my uh, uh, it's also my favorite. Uh, Dax is asking, Are you left handed or do you paint with both? Um, I 
Are you not paying attention, Dax? I'm literally going like this. No, I just I do paint with both both hands. I'm predominantly left-handed, and I would almost venture to say legally left-handed because I sign all my paperwork with my left hand. But there are times when I need to use <clears throat> both hands strategically. Helping somebody well, is showcasing your talent, silly. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> so that's true. That's true. When I was a kid, I used to be uh, fluent in uh, both hands. And then as I got older, I just, my right hand started to be, become my dominant side. That is what happened to me as well. I started out, I think my mom told me that I started out with my left or my right hand and then I switched to my left and then I just kind of did both. And eventually I just, it stuck with the left hand. Um, Phil, I will say here for in between the legs right here, because we don't have any shadowing or highlighting going on in this particular area, it can get a little bit confusing sometimes to figure out where to put the paint as far as to help you understand where the separation is of the legs. So this is where brush stroke pattern is really important. And what I mean by that, if I'm sure everybody else can figure out, is what the pattern is left behind by the bristles of the brush. You can clearly see in my background which way I dragged my paintbrush. So when it comes to the place in between the legs here, what I like to do is on this outer leg here is that I will stroke upwards like so. And then on the other leg, I will come out like this, going this direction. So that way, as the paint dries, I will clearly be able to see where one leg starts and one leg ends. So um, when people start painting with like one color, they do monochromatic paintings. That is one way you can help separate all of your stuff, um, all of your items and things like that when it comes to doing that style of painting, because it can easily get really confused and muddled when mm -hmm. um, you're only using one color with different values to it. So brush stroke pattern is a way to help separate your topics, your subjects. Yeah, I think I uh, screwed on that part, but I'm hoping I'll be able to. Uh, oh, you will. I'll wish it. Oh, you will. There's, there's gonna be great. This is just putting down and blocking out that color. When we go in with the rest of our details, everything's gonna come together. I'm sure it's already coming together nicely. Um, are you, are you still working on the legs? What part are you working on here? Well, as of right now, I just finished Leo's right hand, so I'm working in my way. Wait, what? I said, excellent. I'm doing the same thing. I'm on one of his arms right now. I think here in just a second, I'm going to be switching over to my other brush to make it easier for myself. I think I'm just going to switch arms real quickly. Like I said, I'm just going to go for the bigger areas right now and then switch out. And just take your time. Coming together quite nicely. Huh. And I think it's best if I switch out. Uh, uh, that's nice. Well, and it's funny when it comes to <clears throat> to my hands, because a lot of people, you know, they know that I am left-handed, right? But I will go up, like I went bowling with some friends the other day, and I'm using my right hand, and everybody's like, what are you doing? I thought you were left-handed. Or if I use scissors... <laughs> Like, I thought you were left-handed. There are certain things that I cannot do or just prefer not to gravitate towards with my right hand. So <clears throat> anytime that I need to use my hand for uh, feats of strength, if I'm going to play baseball, if I'm going to do basketball, if I'm going to go bowling, if I'm going to chop a piece of wood, whatever the case might be, I have to use my right hand. This is like my strongest arm. But if I'm going to do delicate work like this, or if I'm sewing, or I don't know, I can't think of anything else right now, um, braiding my hair, I guess, I predominantly use the left hand. And I know braiding, it takes both hands, but there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a physics to it all. So 
it's just kind of weird how that works. One hand is definitely for the more like dominant in the strength. The other one's dominant in the details. It's just interesting how that works. And for the life of me, I cannot use, cannot use scissors in my left hand. Um, I've tried. Oh, really? Because I was like, you know, I'm left-handed and proud, very much so. Makes me different, makes me special, all that wonderfulness. But I cannot do it. My mom told me when I was younger, she's like, look, I already had to learn to do different things when it came to you being left-handed. She's like, but I could not just, I could not give up on on scissors she's like i just had to have you do them with right hand so <laughs> <laughs> that is and i see you lulu hey lulu hey lulu oh she's so awesome oh yeah she really is she really is she's such a great support to so many people <laughs> lumberjack tabitha yeah i don't know why i said chop a piece of wood it's not like i haven't used an axe before but it's um, i haven't done that forever i don't know why i use that as an example <laughs> wait you want to be on camera for a second nemo is that it oh time for okay. the the cat cameo okay i'll show you nemo i'll show you off so every single time I stream or uh, have a, a person of an opposite gen uh, sex than I am, mm -hmm. Nemo here has like stealed my in. attention. Got to be to that, the, the tone of our voice, you know, they just gravitate towards the female. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if he's, he's trying to check the uh, the person out or whatever, but uh, I think he's secretly trying to uh, hog all the attention away from me. Of and course. potentially tab that's, that's what pets do. <laughs> okay. So I've got both arms. The legs I've got across the, the top, like the clavicle portion of his body here. I'm going to slowly start working on his face. Do you need me to make this bigger or are you doing okay, Phil? Do you need me to change the camera a little bit so it takes up the whole screen? Are you all right? I think I'm all right. Okay. Just thought people kind of wanted to see our faces while we talk and do stuff. But I am happy to accommodate for you, sir. Because <laughs> this is all about you. Okay. And it's really coming together. This is really so cool already in the camera, just seeing on the screen what this is looking like compared to what we just had. And so I just want to encourage anybody else as well. One little neat trick when it comes to artwork, right? And, and we think that our skills are not that great. We think that what we're doing is not that interesting. The easiest way to make your paintings look amplified, to make them look way more interesting than maybe they really are, is to add more than one color in certain areas. So for example, our background, we could have easily made this like a yellow sky. We could have easily made this a blue sky and it would have looked fine, it would have looked great. But to make it look more dynamic, more intriguing, add more than one color and, and there's always there's something to be said about the rule of three the magic that is the number three and so even though i added white to this basically we, we have our red that goes into orange and then we have yellow that goes into a softer yellow so it makes it look very smooth more dynamic a little bit more realistic too so even though we're doing a cartoon having a variety of color in one place can really make it look extra special and the same way with what's going on in his chest plate right here, this is all just yellow, but just adding a little bit of the darkness here, a little bit of a murky yellow color, just enhances it just a little bit so that it makes it look special. And the same thing, if I pull this up here closer, woo, hang on, try to find the camera. Sorry guys, this backwards nonsense is hard. So we look at the sword here. And it's just black and white, but because I've streaked it very casually, we get also grays. And we get about 27 shades of gray <laughs> in there. And um, that's what makes it look a little bit more realistic. So play around with your colors. That's what takes your paintings to a more realistic and amplified way, is using more colors in one area. But if you want to keep it simple, just pick your background or something like that. And that will just really 
really just amplify it to an extreme. Just a simple way to do that. If you're trying to figure out an easy way to improve your artwork, it doesn't matter if it's drawing, watercolor, or painting. That's just an easy way to do that. It also depends on the style that you're going for. Obviously, minimalism tends to, to stick with fewer fewer colors. It just oh, yeah, that's Okay. Yeah, I remember it, like when I was taking a, a, a paint cl painting classes uh, back in school. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like always, for some reason, get really nervous. For some yeah. reason. Well, I mean, you know, you're trying to showcase yourself, and you don't. We just have this thing that when we try new stuff, we think we're just we're not good at it, and we might fail, and then look foolish. And you know, I understand where that line of thinking is coming from but unfortunately it's kind of built in but it is really irrational but it's just part of the human existence and the way we grow is to overcome our natural instincts in many ways so and here we go i finished off the green for my turtle here i'm liking what i'm seeing you can already start to see that there's a figure here, of course, that it's really starting to come to life. Obviously, he, he looks like he stepped in front of a green screen right now, and the important pieces are, like, missing. But that's all good. Yeah, I, uh, mine, I, you can tell I'm some more of the familiar. <gasps> there he know. is! Yeah, the is. lakes part is the one I kind of screwed up on, but. Hey, but you can start, if you hold it just a little bit closer, if you don't mind. You can totally tell what that is. That's awesome. Good job, Phil. This is great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to rinse my brush carefully because it's my detail brush. I don't want to destroy it. Pat it dry on my towel. Make sure it stays nice and pointy because this what's so special about this brush is for the details. I want all this green to dry before I start... Um, doing other things closer to the green, right? So I say that we start on our sword already, if that's okay, okay. with you. Whenever oh, yeah, ready. that's cool. Okay. So we could just try to make a bunch of variety of gray over here on our palette, but that's not quite as much fun. This is where we get a little bit more lenient with what we're doing, right? So what I'd recommend is we'll just take some black here. Just a little bit, not too much. You're going to start at the hilt, okay? And I'm going to stroke upwards this way, like so. Just kind of get the edges first, and then strike, stroke up this way. And I'm going to leave a little less than half of it exposed. Get this edge cleaned up here. And we're going to be doing some two-toning right here as well. Technically, black and white are not colors. They're the absence of color. But uh, we'll just pretend like they're colors because it's easier this way. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm leaving the black on my brush the same way we did the two-toning for the sky and get just a wee bit of white on the tip. And I come from the top and stroke back this way. So we go back this way and we'll start noticing that, of course, it's going to be mixing with the black. And I'm going to make this just a wee bit bigger. It might make it easier because it's a smaller place. We don't need too much. We start seeing that we're getting different grays in here. And it's totally fine if it's a little bit streaky. Let me make it a little bit brighter. Make, might make it a little easier to see. So that it looks like reflective metal. Okay. So the great thing about metal is that you don't have to have this perfectly designed because it's obviously we're trying to make this as simple as possible as well. Metal, typically, it is very clean cut when it reflects, but because this is also a cartoon, it's okay if it's not necessarily perfect because from far away, it will look like a very detailed portion of the painting. And... That's the other thing, too, when it comes to artwork. So we've been painting this for a while now, and a lot of times it's good to kind of take a break. We don't really have that luxury at the moment, <laughs> but it's good to kind of step back from the artwork, as they say, and don't focus on the picture as a whole. 
you focus, or excuse me, you don't focus on each individual things, but you focus at, on the picture as a whole. And there's a life lesson in there somewhere. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that goes on in our life. And some things we're not too happy about. Some things we wish we would have done a little differently. But if you take a step back and look at your life as a whole, you might see that it's not as dysfunctional as you think it is. And if there are parts, that's just part of the growing process. And that's just part of the beauty of the art that is your nature, your, your life. You have a story to tell and things you learn throughout the process will help make it better as you go along the journey. Life is kind of like an evolving painting in and of itself, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, G. Doc Swift. Glad you could make it. Thank you for being here. And A2D2. This is so exciting. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. I, I can't tell you how moved I am by all the people that showed up today. That really means... Um, that really means a great deal to me. I, I didn't expect that many people, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the love and support. And be sure to check out Phil's channel. I have it linked in the description below. He goes live stream. He talks and has open mics. He has his fill-up open mic sessions, and he also does some online gaming, so you can check him out as well. Good. So how's yeah. the – how's the, oh, sorry. Oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. How is the hilt looking? Are you figuring it out where it kind of looks streaky? You've got some different variety of gray and you've got a touch of white here, some black. I think I'm unintentionally added to most white, but I oh, yeah. am trying I, to like, smooth it out. But I I, see I'm you. Ninja, the gray. Ninja, is that how you say that? Ginger, ninja. See, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. You have a good night. Get some sleep, man. Oh, see you, Ginger. Yeah, fun fact about my fill up streams. Like the mm -hmm. name, I was looking for a name uh, on Twitter. And uh, actually, Tabula was the one who said, Hey, what about fill up? And so, I just thought uh, it was a cute Leon words, you know, name, you know. And so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, Tabula who was the one who uh, uh, thought off that name. I'm pretty good at stuff like that. Pretty creative. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes time to do our sword, we're going to want it to be more of a gray color with darker on the back. Because if you think about where our lighting is coming from in our background, it's telling us where the, the sun is, right? Our source of lighting in the sky. And so it's coming down from this corner area here. And so obviously whatever's back this way would have a shadow to it. That's something else when you're painting or drawing, you know, pay attention to the realistic aspects. If you don't know where to put your shadows and your highlights, look for the source of light or create a source of light in your painting. I do that with my chibis all the time. Um, I tend to always put darker on the this side over here on the right side. And that means I need to have my source of light over here. So when I do their eyes, I always put that catch light on the left side of the eye depending on which, you know, what I'm going for there. So that's just something easy to remember. Hey, TD. Hey, hey, bro. Is, is Phil a good student? I don't know yet. I have to grade him at the end of it. I kind of, I'm feeling generous, so I might give him a C. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be great. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get some black, get some white on my brush all at the same time here, just like, so it's both there and just streak downwards in my sword like this, which will already start creating some gray. And I've already got some some different variety of gray because the white's in there. And now it's getting darker because the back end of my brush has black. And just kind of play with it, streak it downwards. A lot of this just comes with practice and observation. You start studying other pieces of work that have metallic objects in it and you just play around with it. Study your cup. You know, you look at a glass cup and it has all the reflection of light in it. It's another way you pay attention to it. But here we go. Our sword is going to be so much more interesting than just painting it gray because of the fact that it's going to have, if you will, if we want to pretend that black and white are colors, it'll have a variety of color in it. So it's going to make it look special and a lot more interesting. Yeah, it was always on my like bucket list to uh, make Leo. So I'm I'm really happy. 
I look at that. Look, you had drunk 3PO on your channel. You are now creating Leonardo. What other things you got on your bucket list there, Phil, that you have already accomplished or plan to accomplish? If I might ask, I can always tell you some of mine if you feel like that would be an even. Oh, <laughs> that I've accomplished. I had a um, surprisingly, and you were on there, Tabla. Had yeah. a my yeah. home, uh, Ryan Kennel. Pretty much uh, like some G and G members on my channel, and like hopefully like uh, even the ones that I had on on that Ninja Turtle stream that I did, having mm -hmm. like uh, hopefully be able to interview each of them oh, individually, cool. and then uh. Pretty much, uh, I'm living it. One of mine right now is pretty much being on a live stream with you on your channel. Oh, I was going to say, because you've been on live streams before with me. So. <laughs> yeah. Inside yeah. Booth and... My channel. Yeah. It was, and uh, it, it, like, I have to say, it was... So I might accuse me of I don't care. Tabitha is amazing. You, if you guys haven't uh, subscribed her, I highly recommend you guys doing so because she's like one of the best people I uh, come to know, and I'm really uh, thankful. I'm all right. I'm thankful to I'm have right. her. Just you know, just 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 a girl with a paintbrush trying to make art. So <laughs> <laughs> no one special. But sometimes I didn't get your say. Sometimes, you know, even if you don't think you're special, you might be. There's a there's a saying that says to the world you might be you might be just someone, but to someone you might be the world, you know. And I I've had that in my life where I've had experienced people that they say they're nobody special, but they've mean a lot to you as an individual, you know, and no matter how humble you might be about that you can't change what you can't really change what somebody feels about you. So, but thank you for the kind words, Phil. I mean, you know, whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> One of the things on my bucket list, and if anybody else has stuff in the comments, like if you have, like, I'm curious to know, a lot of us make bucket lists, right? But I would, I don't know too many people that actually get marked things off on their bucket list. So Phil apparently is living the dream and has like seven things already crossed off of his bucket list. <laughs> um, does anybody have stuff that they've actually crossed off of their bucket list? I'm curious to know, just because it seems like it's almost like New Year's resolutions. People make them every year, but they don't really, there's very few people that actually stick to them or keep them. Um, something that, because it was on my bucket list that I was able to cross off was go on vacation with my friends. And that might not, that might not seem very significant to some people, but it is for me because for quite a few years, I didn't have really any friends. Like when I was a teenager, I just didn't really have friends where we were living at, at the time and stuff like that. I, um, and this was before the internet is the way it is today. I didn't have access to a lot of people. So, it, it, which wasn't necessarily bad because of the fact that um, my brother and I became really good, really close and best friends at that time because we only had really each other at, at that phase of our life. So when I did get friends, um, some gal pals, I was like on my bucket list, even before I had gal pals, I put on my bucket list. I want to go on vacation with my friends and I've been on several vacations with my friends. So I've been able to, uh, to cross that off my bucket list. Dax says he wants to meet several people, Tabitha, Dan, Jay, Anna, and of course, Gina. Let's see. Stunning and brave Megatron. Not much. Just working on a commission. Oh, he's talking to somebody else, I guess. Um, I don't really have a bucket list, but I hope to meet Gina Carano and Sasha Banks. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I think a lot of us have those hopes and dreams, like similar ones, you know, meeting certain people. Um, let's see. One of the things on my list, uh, on my bucket list that I've never been able to accomplish, and I don't know if I ever will, because, you know, we evolve as people and sometimes our dreams change. But I always thought it'd be really cool. I, I love history. 
mm-hmm. and um, all that kind of stuff. I would love to go on like an archaeological dig or something like that, some kind of an excavation. I, I used to subscribe to the, the magazines and everything like that. And there's just something about reviving the past that really intrigues me. So I would love, that's actually on my bucket list is to uh, do that. Oh, something that else is- on my bucket list is to actually ski in like Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. That would uh, be cool. Oh yeah, the whole ar- archaeological thing you I mean that is like would be a really cool thing to accomplish one day. To- yeah, I just I just think it would be so much. It, I know it's not as glamorous as people. You know, it's not like Indiana Jones and all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of work goes into it. I mean, you're really just kind of out in the sun digging around but i I don't know i just think that would be an interest that's something an an experience i would love to try to have um stunning and brave megatron meeting every one of my new online buddies here is on my bucket list that would be pretty cool i would have Mm -hmm. wait okay Did Tabitha freeze again? Wait, can you guys hear me? Oh, okay. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, <sighs> yeah my, my thing went oh. out. It's probably because <laughs> I was talking smack about R2 and then it went out. So. <laughs> hey, Don. <laughs> But yeah, another one on my bucket list, since I am part Haitian, uh, I've never been to Haiti. And that's like one thing that I am immediately a bit jealous of Drunk 3PO about, because he wants Haiti. I've never been to Haiti. And so I'll, that's literally on my bucket list, is to uh, one day go to Haiti just to uh, for uh, family reasons. Because so, oh, I got a... Uh, oh, Yeah. And Black Angus Reviews, hello, good to see you, Angus. Thank you for coming. And Dawn, good morning. Uh, Dax over here, maybe getting better internet should be on your bucket list tab, though. Look, I don't usually have these issues. I don't know what's going on. I think I think it's Phil. I think he's doing something. <laughs> anyway, so, and then... Um, hey, Chris. Christopher. So, Phil, where are you at? Did you accomplish the sword? Are we doing good? Are we moving on? Yeah, I, uh, I accomplished the sword. Okay, so then let's move to the sword at the top. We're going to go ahead and go and basically do the same premise. Uh, it's going to be darker back here because it's behind his head, so there's going to be shadows here. So I'm just going back in with the black and just kind of start at the bottom and get lighter at the top. And it's okay if you want to go ahead and do... <laughs> I don't have these issues. Sounds like denial, Tabitha. I didn't say, <laughs> I, have... I, didn't say that I don't have issues. I just, I just prefer to blame them on other people (laughs) (laughs) i mean don't we all right (laughs) but here we're we're moving right along i'll try to move us along a little bit faster here because i want to get i want to get this finished i'm you know i don't want to be here all day my gosh Oh, I see how it is. That's right. I have things to do, man. I gotta prepare for tomorrow, and it's all good. No, this is fun. I enjoy this. It's nice to paint, hang out. There we go. I've got that finished. Don't want it to be too bright because it's behind his head, so the shadows would be casting. And this is kind of a trial run too. I have to kind of figure out, um, you know, how to pace things. It makes it hard. Like when I have the kids in my class. We don't usually talk quite as much. I try to find the times to do it. So obviously there's like a whole bunch of other people here to interact with. So it takes a little longer, but uh, that's all good. It's all fun. All fun. This, this is really great. I appreciate Phil being able to, or being willing to be the trial, the guinea pig trial run here uh, for all this. So we get this all painted. So like I said, it's okay to do the the handle of the, the sword as well and paint that in the darker colors because by the time we hit it with blue, it'll be nice and dry and we can cover up anything that we don't really, really like. 
I love what uh, uh, R2 said. As Tabitha has made it clear to me many times, she has a life bill. <laughs> that's what I want. Pe- that's what I want people to believe. No, this year I'm getting a life. <laughs> Actually, I got I got a life last year. Before that, it wasn't much of a life. So I started my journey of getting a life last year. Did some traveling and all that stuff. And this year, I plan to do more. I am excited. I'm excited to go places. What are some of the places that you would like to go uh, travel to? Um, I would love to see different parts of the United States. There's so much here to see. I'd love to go to Texas and see the Well of Jacob. That'd be so pretty to see. I plan to hopefully go to Maine next year during my cousin's spring break. She wants to go up there. We we don't get to spend a lot of time together. And... Um, we really just want to have our own little adventure, but she's in college for nursing right now. And so she's very, very busy. And so we have determined to go next year, but I'd like to go to Alaska. I would love to go to Iceland. Mm -hmm. And um, I wouldn't mind returning to Panama. That's where I was born and just seeing more of it than what I did when I was little. And I don't know. There's so many places. There's so many places in this world that I'd love to go to. I, I like to travel a lot. I love Europe. Um, I really, really do. It's Abu Nas. Hey, Abu Nas. <laughs> I we gotta talk sometime, Abu Nas, because I have I want uh I gotta ask you something. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Wow, I'm just like it's great. I'm just <laughs> One of the Wi-Fi towers in Treefolk land must be eaten by a beaver. <laughs> That's right, because I live with the tree folk. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. Abu for president. <laughs> R2, I do kid around. I'd love to meet you and your wife one day and little Spidey. You guys have been such a blessing to like the... To me, but also to like our inside the booth channel and everything. You guys are really, and so many of you have, and I appreciate that. Um, R2 and his family are really special to us. So, all right. Moving along, I'm just going to go ahead and move to the blue. So the blue, we're going to keep pretty simple, but we are going to add a little bit of highlight to there because we are trying to be consistent with everything. Even though we're trying to keep it simple, we still want to be a little bit consistent. So right now I'm just going to put down blue kind of the same way we did with their sword and stuff like that. And then we'll add a little bit of white here and there. But just go ahead and put the blue if you're ready to do that. I'm just going to outline everything first. Just kind of outline. And I don't know what kind of blue you were able to get for this. So it's really cool to see the different variety. This blue is quite dark. Um, it's not, I don't know if it's quite true to the actual colors of Leonardo, but... It's blue. It'll work. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best responses ever. <laughs> Again, as long as it is recognizable as the person we're trying to make it, then it's fine. It doesn't have to be exact. It, it just changes things up a little bit. Everybody will be able to look at this by the end of it and know that we have painted a ninja turtle, and they will know by the colors and the weapons that we have painted Leonardo. So that's always good. Coming along really cool. Yeah, good thing that we're not drawing Leonardo how the, the turtle started out, because it would have been really hard to figure out what to switch. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Kaylee says, I think Abu is more popular than Jay. There might be. Might be. You never know. I think he's a really cool guy. Abu knows. <laughs> Jay's all right. <laughs> <laughs> right? It works because the sun is setting, so the blue would be a bit darker. Exactly, Megatron. That touch of realism. That's exactly paying attention to that. Yeah, I saw this uh, picture the other day. Uh, and I posted on Twitter of Michelangelo having a, a, a pineapple on his pizza. Of course you would. And I uh, I totally blame uh, Kaylee 
People like Kaylee for that. Kaylee <laughs> likes pineapple on pizza, doesn't she? She's one of those people. Yeah, she's one of those people. One of those people. And if you if you're one of them too, Jay, I blame you as well. Jay likes pineapple <laughs> on pizza. I I don't know, but assuming that he does, I'm blaming you. Oh, does he yeah. just look like one of those kinds of people? <laughs> yeah, he looks like one of those type of people. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee says a boo over Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are awesome. So fun. Hey, you know, and that is another thing too, where I'm truly grateful just to be able to hang out with, like I had said before, I didn't have certain periods of my life. I didn't have a lot of people to hang out with. I didn't have like, like-minded folk to hang out with. So going out and meeting people on the internet, when the first time I, like when Dan invited me onto the stream, my first ever live stream or podcast, uh, live podcast, that was a huge deal for me because I don't really like going into the unknown. I'm just not Elsa. But um, I would have missed out on so much by not taking just that little step out of my comfort zone. And so this is so cool. Like we're literally hanging out with other people on the internet on Saturday morning, just talking, having a good time, teasing one another. I think JT was the one that said it one time where it's like, you just, you're, well, what he said was like going to the bar after work and hanging out with friends. And I mean, Phil doesn't live where I live. Uh, Kaylee doesn't live where I live. Dax doesn't live where I live, but we're all still able to hang out like this. And it's just really cool. I mean, I personally like meeting people in person better but this oh, yeah, is I'm... this is the next best thing i mean it's absolutely fantastic so thank you everybody here for hanging out with us pineapple on pizza is god saying what is it that god saying that you deserve the very best <laughs> what i would know what <laughs> Okay, okay, I gotta ask, I gotta ask, because I asked this in the last uh, stream, inside the booth stream I was on, mm-hmm. and Tabula Scars like, uh, 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 roll their eyes at me. Oh, no. It's up with Tabby Pizza. How do you guys feel about that? No. <laughs> Phil, why, why you gotta go always ask that question? Like, what is your <laughs> thought? Like, you just let it, you know, imagine you're holding a pen, <laughs> and then just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go. Hey, I, I, uh, ketchup on pizza is like my one kryptonite. It's my one kryptonite. I always, I told you around my brother. If I, if you ever make me mad, bro, give me ketchup, give me pizza, I'll instantly forgive you. Want me to uh, get you a video game or go to the movies with you? Give me ketchup topping pizza. That's my one kryptonite. <laughs> Wow, Lulu. <laughs> I don't know what my kryptonite is. Usually a man in a three-piece suit. That's my kryptonite. There's just something about it. <laughs> something about it. It's totally not food, but I'm telling you what. You get a, a man dressed nicely in a three-piece suit. <sighs> Obviously, wow. Phil, Phil can't relate, but um, I, I hope he, I, I guess he doesn't. I don't think he swings that way, but um, <laughs> The closest three-piece suit, which is what uh, Kadas kind of uh, mentioned, is my uh, uh, Seamus the Hot Dog Ewok cosplay. Of course, and then you would mention that. So anyway, moving along. So Phil, <laughs> if you've got all this blue on here, so what we're going to do is take just a wee bit, I mean like the tiniest bit of white at the tip of the brush, because less is more, unless it's hairspray, and... Rick O'Connor is tab with his kryptonite. I'm telling you, I love me some Brendan Fraser, but I've never seen him in a three-piece suit, but I'll take Rick O'Connor. Uh, six foot, sharp dressed man. This is true. The taller, the better. The you know, the taller, the, how's it go? The higher, the higher, the taller the man, the closer to heaven. How's it go? I don't know. Anyway, so we are going to, I'm going to start on the mask here. And I don't know, let me make this a little bit bigger here. Just a wee bit. And I'm going to start on this outer edge here like this, Phil. And just like we've done, done with our sword, I'm going to stroke back this way with the blue still on my brush. 
And I've used a little bit too much white, but that's okay. I still have a lot of blue on my brush. So I'm just going to gently highlight this a little bit and try to blend it back into the blue. Just a little bit, just, just on this edge here, nowhere else. And just kind of play around with the color until it softens real nicely. So that way everything is consistent. And I, I'm sure that's kind of hard to see, but hopefully you can kind of figure that out. Um, Tabitha, do you own any Copic sketch markers? Dude, yes, I do. They are, I love Copics. I have a bunch of Spectrum Noir ones, but to me, nothing comes close to Copic markers. I have a lot of them. I asked for them for Christmas because, you know, you know, they're expensive. But I probably have, I probably have like 30, maybe 30 markers. Um, and I always expanding. And so I, ha I use Artez, is it Arteza, Artez? And then Copic and Spectrum Noir. Um, what is it? It's not true, it's what? It's not a true suit if we can see your Hershey kisses, Phil. Oh, okay. I don't, I really wish I hadn't read that. Um, every girl's <laughs> crazy about a sharp dressed man. This is true. Uh, Mrs. R2 can confirm the taller the better. I don't know about a suit, but I do enjoy men in uniform. Girl, who doesn't? Let me tell you. <laughs> There's just something about a presentable dude that, yeah. Sweet baby Jesus, I just see now what you did to poor Leo. What? I don't know what you mean. Who, me? Me? Uh, uh, Didi? I don't know what he means. But I'm also going to do that slight bit of lightness on the tips of the tendrils. I don't know what they're called. I can't think of the name. And just again, so everything's consistent. And with the tendrils, be very wispy with it. It doesn't have to be exact. It should do it like the sword because, of course, uh, they're floating and going on in the wind there. Oh, do you mean my stencil there, TD? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Just a little bit. Just to, just because it's it's moving, okay? And so quick tip number 427 um, is that another way to make your paintings look interesting is movement, the illusion of movement, right, guys? So obviously he's standing still, but to make this look a little bit more interesting and have some feeling put into it, the little straps back here, they look like they're waving in the wind. If this is not here, it's very stagnant, which is fine. But it does something for our painting to make you think that the wind is actually blowing. So that's another little tip there. Just adding a little something like this to make it look like the wind's moving can add a lot of uh, interest to your painting as well. well. Thank you for stopping by, Christopher. It was really awesome that you were here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Nice I seeing you again. I rocked a tuxedo at my brother's wedding a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I can't really think of too many men that don't look as attractive in a tuxedo. I mean, even Danny DeVito looks 10 times better <laughs> in a tuxedo. All right. So how's it going, Phil? Are we done with the blue? Nearly. Okay. Nearly. I'm just extending a part. All right. Hey, Dennis, how are you? Glad you're here. This is a great idea. I love the live painting. Yeah, and we're just hanging out and talking about bucket lists, pineapple on pizza, and other frivolous things that make us laugh. And, you know, whether or not men look 10 times better in three-piece suits or, you know, being tall. <laughs> TD, I'm rocking a tuxedo on my profile pic on Twitter. Exactly. So not only do you have a superhero outfit, you're wearing a tuxedo. So, I mean, it's like five times the charm, you know? So. Wait, wait, wait. So I have to take TD's, uh, take a book out of TD's book, uh, pace out of TD's book as I jump with that up. Okay. <laughs> I don't recommend it because that sounds really hot. And I'm just saying, no matter how attractive the man smelling like sweat is is you know will keep the ladies away too so <laughs> here we go so we're about to finish up here we're getting really close 
This is really awesome, coming together really nicely. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the whites inside the eyes of the Leonardo's mask here because this way we can determine if we need to alter the shape. Will he look menacing like in our example piece here? And if I bring that a little bit closer, we can see that his eyes are almost like little upside down uh, pyramids and things like that. So there we go. Go add white to his eye. You can make them oval, but the shape of the eye will also determine like the, the mood or the expression of the person, right? So it looking with these little upside down triangles, the, the, the angular, the more angular, the more sinister it looks. And he looks like he's pretty upset about something with this little snarl he's got going on. So that's up to you. Again, I like to make room for creative liberty. How are you interpreting this painting? Play around with it. The great thing about acrylics is that if you happen to make a mistake, you can always wait for it to dry and try to cover it up. Don't he just looks a, like he's glowing. <laughs> His eyes look like he's glowing. <laughs> oh, it's very. It is quite quite dark or, or quite bright. Let me see if I can darken it just a little bit so it's not. I like uh, 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 that uh, what R2 says, that Phil needs a tuxedo teaser like Party Jesus. <laughs> I don't know who Party <laughs> Jesus is. I'm also going to go into the mouth here, Phil, and do just that little bit of a triangle. Also, you still have your stencil so you can kind of see what that what that should look like. What the heck are you doing, Emo? Oh, I you're board? talking to me. I'm like, I'm painting. <laughs> oh, no, my cat was beginning to play with my plate. <laughs> oh, they do that. Little urchins. Thank you, Kaylee. We're working hard to make it amazing. Phil, whenever you get done with the teeth and the mouth, could we give our fans, give our audience an update that they so richly desire? I suppose. <laughs> suppose. Right, I understand. Man, artists, cantankerous, persnickety folk, you can't deal with them. Mm. I haven't seen, R2, I haven't seen Talladega Nights in Eon, so the only line I remember from that movie that I think is just absolutely absurd and hilarious is when they're talking about the names of their children. You know, well, if we want them to be a sissy, we would have named them Dr. Quinn and Medicine Woman. <laughs> I love that part. That's good. Other than that, I don't care too far things about this movie. But Well, if you guys want an update. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, look at that. Oh, you've even added. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Nice highlights. Oh, he's so fun. He kind of looks like a little miniature action figure. Hey, I like what you've done to the tip of the sword. It makes it more look like a, it's not a saber. Is it a saber? What's that curved Ar Arabian sword? That's really cool. Yeah, I don't know what those Caribbean swords are called, but yeah, I, I, I turn out to like it as well. It's really fun. Super fun. Look at that. All right. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So. Thanks, you guys, in the chat. Yeah, they're so sweet. So we're going to create the little knee pads thing. You may have noticed, Phil, that I did not ask you to bring. Thank you, Eskimitar. Very appreciative, Gary. I can never remember that. Thank you, Don, for coming by. So nice to see you. Have fun with the rest of your day. So, Phil, you may have noticed that I did not ask you to bring brown or beige because we are going to do a little bit of blending today. Yes, yes. I'm going to take... My mm -hmm. half-inch flat brush, I'm going to rinse it off and dry it off of my towel. It's okay if it's not perfectly clean. Because in order to create brown, you kind of need to have a mixture of a variety of stuff going on, right? So I'm just going to, I need to get some more red here. Not this one. I didn't want that. So I'm going to get some more red. So I won't be needing red anywhere else. So I'm just going to use this little pod over here to mix. So I've got my red. I'm just going to scoop, scoop up some green. Red and green. Red and green. And just start mixing some of it together. And you'll notice it turns into a very unappealing color. I don't want it to be too dark right away. 
I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, brighten it up a little bit. We can add a little white later on. This is how we're making murky colors. You just kind of play around with all of them until you get mostly red and green here. Okay. Mostly red and green. This is how we're going to get brown. And then when we add a little bit of white to it, let me smear this here. I'll just show you right here. If I smear that, very unsightly color, very unsightly color. And then if I get some white, just a little bit, always a little bit of time, and kind of play around with it, let me blend. We're going to start getting more of a beige kind of color. This is not a lot of white, so let me get some more. Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see one. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of, um, and we're going to be aiming for the lighter version of this. I might add a little bit yellow here. It's fun to play around with these colors. A little bit more white. And this is what we're going to use to create the knee pads. Okay. And all the other, like the arm, wrist, the wristbands and things like that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with this brush here. You can always use your smaller brush. Take your time with the little details there. I'm just going to block in most of it and then return with my smaller brush. And we're almost done, Phil. Oh, yeah. I found me sad when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good. Okay. Thanks, uh, Mrs. R2. I see you. And thank you everybody that's hung out and stuck out, stuck around for this long. I appreciate that. That's really awesome. Yeah, and again, please go subscribe to this wonderful person that's hosting this stream right now. I'm all right. <laughs> that's what she says, but she is mm -hmm. amazing. Only on Thursdays. <laughs> so I just want to quickly show here if you get a lighter version fill like you put it on and then you take a little bit more white kind of mix it a little bit and add just a little bit like we did with the blue because everything's consistent here the sword the streamers of his or the bands of his, his head piece there just putting a little bit of white at the front does so much for our painting just like so so it's just that little touch of a highlight makes things look a little bit um more realistic right and because it's material it doesn't necessarily need to be a perfect blend right it can be a little bit choppy because that makes it look like we've got some wrinkles in our clothing which is natural a nice easy bypass oh yeah into realism right super fun dax morgan asks is any shirt with large front uh Front logo on on it, like the one you wore last night. Any shirt with a small front logo on it. Yes. So in my Etsy shop, Dax, there's the there's only one long sleeved shirt, and it has the tiny logo on the front of my Gina Carano Do Not Comply, and then it, on the same shirt on the back, it has the logo, just bigger. But the difference is that the logo on the front underneath it has. Um, Ha a part portion of the American flag and on the back it has a tiny letters underneath of the do not comply that says hashtag we love Gina Carano to answer your question okay get darkness going on here I'm gonna have to switch my brushes. But yeah, thank you for uh, uh, being willing uh, to have me on your channel and uh, 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 allowing me to uh, be a, uh, a guest on it. I guess oh, I'm saying the same you. thing, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Well. That's I, 
you know, gratitude is always appreciated, but thank you for being willing. You know, again, it's not necessarily everybody's forte, but you'd be surprised how much fun it is just to give it a, give it the old college try, as they say. Here we go. And I'm just going to, I bounce back and forth between my darks and my lights, Phil. So because they're all, all the colors are created with the same paints, you, it's easy to just kind of bounce back and forth as needed. And this way they blend much nicer and a little bit easier mm -hmm. and just a s easy subtle transition are they coming along okay are they working is it making it look amazing oh yeah <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure so we're getting down to the the important stuff here and the final touches just lighten this up a little bit get it all right, clean up some of this stuff here. We have gone a little bit longer than I anticipated, but again, that was just kind of that was kind of prophesied in the beginning. It was foretold of your that that was most likely going to happen. <laughs> so, but that's okay. All good as long as everybody's okay and having fun. It's all good in the hood. Oh, yeah. And this is family point. Good. Hopefully, maybe inspire you to do your own kind of artwork and things like that. Never know. If not, you can at least say, I tried it. I gained some XP points. I know how to do things. And maybe even some of the people in the chat, even though you're not painting, maybe it's inspired you to try new things or to enhance what you've already done. Maybe some of the little tidbits or things you've never thought about incorporating into your artwork. And, um, you know, sometimes we just need a guide. You know, I know when I was first starting out in art and everything like that, <sighs> I just wanted to be special. I wanted to be the chosen one. I didn't want to have help. I didn't need guidance. Silly, Tabitha. So silly, silly. <laughs> um, how many years and months wasted thinking that I didn't need somebody to help me and tell me what to do. That's for shame, Tabitha, for shame. But that's okay. I'm here now and I've learned better. And I'm just trying to help other people understand that, you know, it's okay to kind of kind of do it on your own, go out of your box. But it's at the same time, it's not, it's not bad to ask anybody and it doesn't take any of your value, your worth, or your intrigue from who you are as an artist to kind of seek help from other people. Okay. I've got this ginormous blob on my hand. It's all good. Oh, I used to do this boy. all the time in the art studio and people would get freaked out and they're like, oh, you're a real artist. It's like, because I put paint on my hand. Okay. Whatever works for you. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it was just easier to show people uh, up close by mixing the paints on my hand than to sit or stand at the back of the studio and try to show them. So maybe I don my Bob Ross outfit again for the promo trailer of Deadpool three. I've seen the pictures of Deadpool with his uh, Bob Ross outfit. It's hilarious with their Afro and everything like that. My goodness. Okay. Um, I'll just let you know, Phil. So like I said, we're almost to the end here that um when you're done with all the knee pads and the elbow bands and all these kinds of different things we will be returning at least i will be it depends on you with your your brush and what you're most comfortable with but um we will be returning to the half inch brush and we're going to start filling this in with yellow oh the uh, uh stomach stomach yeah because obviously it's got the gradient in the background, so he kind of looks a little bit invisible in the middle there. So I'm going to have to fix that. Hey, where are you, Nemo? Okay. 
Okay. Sorry, my cat kind of scared me because I thought he was like directly behind me. Oh. <laughs> Sneaky little blighters. Are, are you nope. ready to do the yellow? In a few moments, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought, but you oh, yeah. I'm just uh, doing one more coating sure. over them to uh, satisfy that need. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so I'll just go ahead and tell our viewers. So the last few things that we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be filling in this tortoise shell, like the, well, not tortoise, turtle shell, the, the front cover. I don't really know what the individual portions of a turtle's body are. But we're going to fill this in. We're going to be adding some uh, very enhanced, uh, excuse me, I can't think of the word, not enhanced. The word eludes me. But extreme. Uh, shadows in here to really amplify everything. And that's another little trick there, guys, is that if perhaps if your painting isn't as bright as you want it to be, but you can't figure out how to switch it up, then just make everything else around it dark because then it, everything else looks 10 times brighter. So we're going to be filling in the stomach area, adding some dramatic shadowing to this. And then we're going to finish off our painting with our precipice here. And it's going to be going to be great. Almost done. His belly, yes, R2, that would have been the easiest thing for me to say. I sometimes, <laughs> you know, I tend to use very large words. I try to be meaningful with what I, and selective with what I say. But sometimes I forget that simple is just better. And because I use big words so often, I tend to forget what the simple words are. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a real problem. Oh, yeah, that's understandable. So you tell me when you're ready for the yellow, Phil. Oh, I'm ready for the yellow. Oh, well, then let's do it. I'm going to get some yellow. Now I'm going to I'm going to paint individual chain the individual chambers. Remember, I told you brush stroke pattern is important. So that's what I like to do here. I'm just going to brush upwards in the individual chambers. And it's okay if you still see a little bit of that red and that orange popping through the yellow. Yellow's um, not really a very um, thick pigment or I say pigment it's kind of technical I can't think the right words now my mind is starting to freeze oh no but anyway it's okay to see a little bit of the other colors coming through if it's if the viscosity level fancy word here for like the the thickness of the paint um mm -hmm. if it's really thin because this way again just using it to your advantage it just adds some shadowing to your paint job that you won't have to work hard harder for like you don't have to do it because it's already there you're just going to kind of cover it up a little bit and let it just speak for itself oh yeah, that okay. makes sense yeah and it's also going to be consistent with everything else that we've been doing in this painting uh, a little at least in mine adds a little bit of that grunge flair to it mm -hmm. so here we go Dude, I can't believe we've been painting for two and a half hours. This is ridiculous. We gotta speed things up, Phil. <laughs> we can't gotta go. <laughs> oh my gosh. But that's okay. We're almost done. It's no rush. We don't we don't want to rush. We will we will scurry. We will not rush. Yeah, just kind of gracefully touch over with everything. Just light brush strokes here. Now, I mean, if I was doing one of my regular paintings like I do with my oil painting, I mean, two and a half hours is nothing. It would just go by so quickly. And uh, I mean, it takes usually days for me to finish those projects. It just, phew, lots of work. There we oh go. yeah, I I I already know the feeling because that's what I used to do with my uh, when I used to draw a lot. Oh yeah, drawings. Yeah, my chibis can take several hours as well. Just depends on how much uh, detail I wish to put in there. So, when I do get finished putting the yellow in the belly, I will put this brush back in my water because we will only need it to finish off the bottom portion of our painting here. And so I don't want the paint to harden on the bristles. So I'm going to 
just kind of splash it around in my water to break up the paint and then leave it sitting in the water for later. Yes, and also because my camera, I should have hooked it up. This is still new to me, guys, so I appreciate everybody's patience and just enjoyment and everything like that with going on. So, Phil, my uh, my secondary camera right here is on 15%, so it's a good thing that we are uh, getting close to the end here. <laughs> I don't want it to cut out. <laughs> oh, I, I, I keep forgetting that some uh, now cameras has uh, battery or charged with battery now. It's actually my iPad. So if you're still working on your the stomach portion of your turtle, I can go get my charger. Oh, I should be fine. I should be fine. Okay. Because I'm nearly done with it. Nearly okay. done. Just being extremely uh, careful with this. Oh, yeah. Oh, I understand. That's why I don't want to rush you. And so that's why I am going to just step away. And go get my charger so that we don't risk. We don't want to take a risk. Roger, Roger. So now is uh, 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 Phil T and T's channel now. How are y'all doing? If you guys can, uh, actually, uh, please uh, hope Tablet can to 400 because she definitely deserves more subscribers. She is amazing. Uh, and she's one of my best friends, so. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm boomering this. But um, I do on my channel, uh, I talk nerdy stuff. I actually have these streams called Open Mics where uh, you, the audience, can... Uh, Come onto the panel with me. I do drop the link to the stream yards. So if you guys want to uh, uh, be on the panel with me and talk to me, you guys can. I also do gaming streams like uh, Tablet said earlier. I've done like a Ninja Turtle game, the Kingdom Hearts series, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. I'm currently doing uh, um, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Uh, I figured that one would be more for the kids, um, etc. So yeah. That's what I pretty much do on my channel. And I do uh, interviews as well. And I see this amazing person's back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real quickly. It's like, that's the last thing I need is for the camera to go out. It's bad enough when it freezes up. So you just let me know when you're ready for the final bits of our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle here. Oh, I'm ready. Okay, ready. great. So I'm bringing back my detail brush. And we're going to go into black. And this is where it's going to take some of our time because, you know, we want to be careful with what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up my original painting. Now, again, you can customize this however you want. You'll notice that I did not put the outline on every portion of my turtle. I'm not a huge person that uh, I'm not really hugely into outlining. I don't really like doing that. But it helps hide things and it helps amplify things in certain ways. So I pretty much stick to just um, outlining the right side of everything. You'll notice even like his legs and stuff like that just in there. We'll worry about the details on the inside. Right now we're just going to outline. When it comes to the areas of the muscles, you'll notice that we do want to curve in just a wee bit in different places here. So it looks rounded and everything. And of course, you can use your stencil as a guide. Mm -hmm. Mainly just focus on the outer portion here. So... Your background is going to be nice and dry by now, so you can very well use your pinky or rest your wrist um, in order to help guide you. So one other thing, Phil, when it comes to using this detail brush for this moment right now, the closer you hold it to the metal, uh, yeah. the better, right? You have more stability. It's like reminiscent of holding a pen or a pencil, something we're very familiar with. For whatever reason, when people first start painting, they like to hold the paintbrush back here. This is a very advanced method. I do not recommend. Hold it here. <laughs> so here we oh, go. Yeah. I'm going to bring this up so into solo mode here, just so we can see it a little bit better. Thank you. Try not to make the edges too thick. If you do, it's okay. Again, it's just a comic book feel to it. 
This paintbrush is not meant to hold a lot of paint in it. So going back and forth continuously makes total sense. This is where some patience comes to play. So I'm just going to do the outside portions just now. We can talk about the uh, inner details in a little bit. I don't outline my swords, just to let you know. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I can I can understand why. Yeah, I like them to just kind of stand on their own. They're already so fancy that Okay, got my little curves. And like I said, this kind of helps clean up any of the little edges that we're, we're not too happy about. Maybe we went out of bounds and that's okay. We just clean it up later. Coming down to the wire there. Here we go. So what does everybody do on a normal Saturday, if I might ask, if I might just kind of deep dig a little bit into your, your life? For me, a normal Saturday, I, I, I work sometimes because I dictate my own schedule and because kids, um, you know, they're off of school on the weekends. A lot of times I'll have classes on the weekend or I draw or I edit videos. Um, sometimes I play video games with my sister-in-law. Um, if it's, if it's warm outside, I will read a book and sit outside and, or I'll garden or something like that. But that's pretty much what a Saturday is like for me. Oh, for me is, uh, play video games, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is my norm for me. Yeah. And then, uh, like um, work. pretty much. <laughs> and then sometimes like, uh, I will like, uh, interview some people like my last inter uh, person I interviewed was R to the Iggy. Ah, that's right. And uh, I would also, uh, when it's warm out, I will actually make it a point at least once a week to uh, take a walk in my neighborhood. Yes. I like, I like to be outside. That is, that's my world. I'm, I'm usually most happy and I can be outside, that, but I don't like the cold. So it can be very difficult for me. Um, <clears throat> it can be very difficult for me in the wintertime. Whoops, that's the wrong way. Oh, because yeah. I, tend... I don't like the cold either. That's why I don't I... take walks in the winter. <laughs> I don't mind. I, I, I do because there's still some beauty in the world and everything that I want to see. But I tend to get some cabin fever by February. And I just need to be outside. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when it's cold, it's very difficult for me to enjoy it. But I do. I love being outside. Let's see. Uh, Megatron says, draw, nap, and chill. Yes, naps are awesome. Kaylee says, I hang out, uh, watch streams, play video games. Sometimes I work on weekends, depending if I need to go into work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, TD says, I chill. I go out with friends, and I enjoy the day. Dax says, I watch ama <laughs> amazing, beautiful artists create amazing, beautiful art. Or at least now I do. Look at that, Phil. Dax thinks you're amazing and beautiful. Oh, so I'm trying to make people is over here. <laughs> <laughs> but no, standing up me, Frank Megatron is like he. I know, like he's an artist, and I know, like mm -hmm. he is a uh, Ninja Turtle versus the Robins from like Batman recently. And I know he did, gave like one, at least one to my nerdy home. And his mm -hmm. he's a another amazing artist. Oh. So many amazing people you can meet out here. Um, Phil, I don't know where you're at in the painting process. I've come down the entirety of the right side, and I'm coming down to the foot. And if you remember, we did those little parentheses here to indicate toes. And so just when you come around the foot, just kind of remember where you put those. Mm -hmm. And just curl in like so. I don't know if you can see that. I apologize if not. That little little bit right there. I can make it a little bit wider, make, make it easier to read. There we go. Oh, yeah, I see that. Oh, okay. yeah. And just... And AQ. 
Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Just saying, just come around, come around the mountain. Okay. Oh, you gave Steph all the turtles versus the Robins. Okay. Okay. Oh, whoops, I broke my own rule. Uh, I've just gotten so into the um, outlining that I went and outlined this side of the leg. But that's okay. You know, if you make a little unexpected visit like that, you just kind of, oh, Keely Chow's here. Hi, Keely. Good morning. I'm just teaching Phil how to paint. And we're having a good time. We've talked about all kinds of cool things today. Bucket lists, pineapple on pizza, um, what we eat for breakfast, um, if men look better in suits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Abu Nas says that he would buy that if you put this on the t-shirt. Oh, really? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't recommend this one. This one's not quite as good, I think, as my original one, but that's okay. That's just how it is. Happy mistakes, Tabitha. Yes, exactly. No accidents, just happy. Well, happy mistakes. That's what. It is. No mistakes, happy accidents. Excuse me. I get it reversed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. Just finishing up. And, you know, again, it's just some simple things. Just about where you place your colors, where you place your highlights, all that good stuff is what creates this. You, some people might look at even this and just say, I could, I could never do that. You absolutely can. And hopefully, hopefully if that was your mindset when you first watched something like this, and then you've seen how I've tried, I've guided Phil and shown him how to do this this and you can see what we've all accomplished um hopefully you can see that it's not as hard as you might think it is um it just takes a little time and a little guidance and thankfully with youtube there's all kinds of that available to us and thankfully for tabitha she was she's willing to uh help guide me through this process because uh, if I didn't have a, a person to guide me, like Tabitha did, which I definitely appreciate, I <laughs> probably would have had my uh, turtle not as good as it does look now. Well, exactly. That's why there's no no problem with asking people for help, you know? In a way, she's like my Obi-Wan in uh, art. Ooh, I'm his only hope. That's right. I'm a general. No. <laughs> <laughs> so with our stencil here, and you know, again, take your time with all the details you're doing there, Phil. I've pretty much outlined all of the right-sided elements of my painting. And if you're not there yet, it's totally fine. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll notice that there's this section over here that's just kind of strange looking. And yeah. In in our original one, it's just all in black. And that really makes it look pretty excellent. So I'm going to just draw, I say draw, but I'm going to use my paintbrush to make a mark to show you what we're going to do with that section. So I'm just going to come down basically from his crotch here and go up the leg and then come at a hard angle up to his arm like this. And we're just going to... So, Phil, are you saying Tabitha lost her previous student to the dark side? <laughs> that, might be, that might be where they all went to, for real. Maybe. That's funny. And we're going to paint all of this black in here. Okay, this little, I'm going to make it a little X. All this little section here is going to be black whenever you get there. No, oh, yeah. Well, since I inadvertently brought that up, who, who, do you have a favorite Jedi? Do I have a favorite Jedi? Yeah. Yes. I do. Um, my favorite, it's kind of a battle between the two, but my favorite Jedi would have to be Qui-Gon Jinn and Bastila Shan. Oh, the Old Republic uh, 
Jedi. Mm -hmm. I loved Bastila. She was just, I don't know, she was really cool. I might think differently if I play the game again. It's been like a hot minute since I have played that game. It's got to be like a decade or more. I don't know how long that game's been out. <laughs> it's been a really long time uh, since I've played that game. But I remember just, just really enjoying and loving that character. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, I recently bought that game on this uh, for the Nintendo Switch, and uh, I, I uh, my first playthrough of it because uh, I had to restart it because the game kept a freezing on me for some reason. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, I kept on like playfully uh, having my character flirt with her, <laughs> and it was so fun just to see her get mad. <laughs> it, yeah, it is pretty funny when you would say something and she gets all offended and whatever. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> um, yeah. Now I have to say, um, I I really enjoy. I don't know much about it from the cartoons, but I'm really enjoying Ahsoka from like The Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett. I think that Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka is just awesome. I don't even need to know the cartoons to enjoy that character. She's doing an amazing job as Ahsoka. Oh yeah, so see, I, Ahsoka's my favorite uh, Clone Wars character. And I know like there's like a lot of people who are saying she should have died in like Order 66 or pro like potentially in a, uh, her fight with Darth Vader. I, I can't say. And I think that's what I admire so much about Rosaria Dawson as Ahsoka and just Ahsoka in general is the fact that I don't have any background knowledge of Ahsoka, right? I just mm -hmm. know that what I see from Rosario Dawson as this character, I like. Like, I like her a lot. So um, I can only imagine how awesome she must have been in the cartoons and stuff. Uh, so, Phil, I've also drawn a line up the leg to divide here to help us remember where, you know, the division points were. We're going to be doing some more... Um, outlining in the middle of everything but as far as the outsider outside portions that's really just kind of up to you um i don't know where you're at at this point oh yeah i uh so far did uh the general outline of okay. uh of leo and i okay. went back to do some details as best as i could Okay, um, so I'm going to paint this inner portion here black. I don't know what details you've already done. Which ones have you have you done already? Oh, I did that part black, and I did a uh, 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 I did the part where uh, like how like Leo usually has this like uh, well has that those straps that we see in the stencil part. I kind of yeah. did a fair amount of that. Okay, well, you just kind of have to tell me then when you've done certain parts of the project because I. Otherwise, I won't know, and I'm just kind of like hanging out in limbo. So I'm going to just outline his entire belly area here and then also follow up the center, the same, like the dividing portion there with the black as well. And it just all of a sudden, it's just going to really come to life with all of these black portions. And, um... Okay. Kaylee says, although I like Kosa, Koska... More than a Koska, more like a so. Oh, Koska, like she costs a lot, <laughs> or what? Okay. And then I've also gone into his face already. So I curved around his teeth and then came up his little snout area here. And I've also added this curved line at the top where his mask is to help us know that, um, it's protruding. And you can go around his eyes if you want to. That's up to you. I recommend very thin lines if you do. And you don't have to do the entire eye if you don't want to. Yeah, I gave him little pupils. I haven't done the, like, the outline of the uh, eyes, though. Okay, I'm kind of... I'm I'm stay, staying clear from that because I'm kind of worried I might mess that up. Sure, whatever makes you feel more comfortable, absolutely. And I'm just kind of adding some lines to the knee pads and things like that. I don't know if you've done that already. 
Oh yeah, I'm uh that's the next step I'm gonna do, yeah. Okay, all right. I just like I said, you have to kinda of tell me what what you've done already. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Okay. And we're almost done, people. This is looking pretty great. Yeah, yours is like real really cool looking. Well, thank you. Part of it is just because I know what I'm doing. So, you know, I can easily glide back and forth and add little details here and there. And that's why it's so important not to necessarily compare your, you know, when you're, when you're comparing artwork, it's good not to compare your skills. It's fine to compare your artwork if you're learning, if you want to learn. Like, you, oh, I like how that's done. I wish I would have done something like that. That is fine. But as long as you're not comparing your skill level, you know, if you're down in the dumps because you're looking at my painting and saying, man, mine doesn't look anything like that. Well, again, if you're not really a, a painter, you can't expect it to look like mine because I do this for a living. Right. So um, just something to think about. Oh, yeah, I know. I got like a lot to learn uh, for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, which I'm, I'll definitely be excited Uh to uh, do more of this in the future, like uh, painting in general in the future. Oh yeah, it's 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 really good. There, I've met, you know, and heard other artists that say there's just so many life skills that be, can be learned when it comes to painting. It teaches you uh, patience. It teaches you a uh, different perspective and appreciation for life and all that good stuff. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's also what my uh, drawing class has been doing which i know i like uh talk to you about it how like mm -hmm. besides doing pencil then pen he's making us do pen and now pencil and that's a, a totally new style for me so oh yeah and it sometimes it kind of hurts because you feel like you know maybe you're good at one thing and then they try to do something new and you're like i can't do this i don't know what i'm doing so then you feel like you're not even a good artist anymore and it's like no it's just something different you know just kind of break outside the box Give it a try. Oh, so yeah. when I'm doing the outlines for the knee things here, I do take my brush and like feather light, just kind of swoosh down this way to add a little bit of shadow. I'll do it up here in the leg. It might be a little easier to see. Just very gently kind of let the paint splotch a little bit. And it gives a little bit of that grunge, but also gives nope. some of that, that shadow there. Oh, yeah. Cool. And I'll do that on the inner thing portion of this thigh here as well. Oh, I forgot to outline over here and that's okay. We're almost to the end guys. We're making it. We're making it. I can't promise that when there are other streams with hopefully other YouTubers that they won't be quite this long guys because we are going quite, quite long, <laughs> but it's okay. It's all good. Again, this was a trial run thing. So I appreciate Phil being patient and all that kind of stuff. Um, but um, hopefully they'll be just a wee bit shorter in the future. But this was just a way to try to navigate through the process and just figure it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And you think about how far we've come with this painting before. It was just a sky, which was really cool already. And now we've got this really cool comic book character going on over here. Fantastic. So fun. Yeah, like I said, this is like one of my most favorite, like, this is like one of my uh, favorite uh, arts projects I've ever done. Oh, great. And I've just added the lines on his legs to make it look like he has the muscles there. That's just really simple down here on his shin, just two lines kind of going at a slight angle. And then I did one on this side, because that's like real anatomy there. It's how we really are as well when we work out, if you work out. And I'll put little little toenails here. You should get my nerdy home on. She's an artist in the closet. Oh, I didn't know that she oh. does artwork. Oh yeah, my nerdy home is amazing. I've I I think you and her like. Uh, Doing something like this will wait uh, up. <laughs> we'll have to see. I will admit that I am kind of nervous about asking people because the idea of them not wanting to do this, you know, it just feels like rejection. <laughs> but 
but that's just part of the process. What do you think of painting apps like the movie studios are using? Painting apps. Um, well, I've kind of mentioned it previously that I don't, I don't want to um, be disrespectful to people who do digital art and stuff like that. It's amazing what we can do these days. It's fantastic. Hey, Chris the Geek, nice that you stopped by. But um, it's just that for me, there's just something very spectacular about tangible items. Really actually making these with your hands, playing with the colors, feeling the resistance of the paint or the paper and stuff like that. Um, so painting apps, they're fine. It's just not the same. So, Phil, we're almost done. Whenever you get all your outlining done and all your little details and stuff like that, we will be retiring this brush because we will no longer need it. Hey, Ro, we are on, but we're almost to the end here. Uh, Dex says, that's Star Wars Girl 2. I'm telling you, she's an amazing, she is an amazing artist. I, I'm keeping tabs of her Alice in Wonderland painting. I like the way that she shadows and highlights. She has a very creamy color palette as well whenever she paints. It's very beautiful. Oh, yeah. That Star Wars girl, I really like her uh, art channel because I really love seeing how like, she does things. It's it, Artists are fun to watch, for sure. So, whenever you get done, Phil, like I said, we're going to uh, finish off our painting for today. <gasps> and we are going to create something. Because right now, Leo is just kind of hovering in the ether, you know, and uh, we don't need that. So we're going to be putting something underneath of it. Now, yours has the Leonardo quite high. He's up in the in the sky a little bit right now. He's just levitating very gracefully. So I mm -hmm. recommend with yours kind of making it like a mountain. Um, so I'm going to take my, my half inch brush here. And when I, I'm going to take some black and we're going to kind of play around with the paint like we did with our sword but a lot darker, right? So I'm going to take this and just put a line underneath my guy right here, underneath both feet, just like so. So that way, at least I have a starting place for his um, <laughs> a new drinking game every sh shot, every time to have this as creamy. Yeah, that or, and so I say that a lot. <laughs> and so, um, <clears throat> This way we have a starting point and we can figure out what we want. So in my original painting, oh, I smeared it with black. That's okay. I have, whoops, let me move this over here. You can see that it, I go all the way to the edge and I come over and just have it as an angle, as a slant. <clears throat> I mean, you could do whatever you want with this. Yours, like I said, if you want to make it more of like, a, you can make it a building or you could make it a mountain because of the fact that it's so high up. So you can make it as perfectly angular as you want it to be, or you can make it kind of jagged. I'll give you an example. If you just kind of would take your brush and just kind of add things like so. Uh, obviously, it makes it look more organic this way, not like a building. So that's up to you. But I'm going to just kind of drag this over here and then make it go off at an angle like so. And then over here. And this is what I'm going to fill in with black. I'll make it look a little a little bit prettier. Try to make it straighter. I'm I'm painting at an angle that I normally don't paint. So <laughs> it makes it a little bit bizarre for me. But this way you have a lot of creative liberty where with what you're doing right now, Phil, since yours looks very different from mine, from the composition standpoint and the structure. And I'm just going to fill this in with black. Once I have the basic shape of my platform here, and then just fill the entire thing with black, and then we'll add our little bit of highlight to the front in just a wee bit. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Mm hmm Everything is consistent, so it all works together. Almost done. And 
And then we'll do the grand reveal of Phil's majestic piece, but not yet. Got to wait all the way to the end because we're we're coming down to it. It's pretty fantastic. So cool. I'm so excited. I'm so happy. This is a great way to spend Saturday. Oh yeah, I couldn't. I can't think of a, a fun, more fun way. This is like really. Uh, as I, I like the artist in me is like really digging this. Good, good. Just want to inspire other people to try new things, help them out. <clears throat> so yes, well, while Phil busy working on that, as I've been saying over and over again, thank you so much for being a part of this stream. This has been a, a most extraordinary turnout. It's better than what I anticipated. And that's just Jesus. He just is an awesome friend to have. Not just because he does things for me, but despite all my shortcomings, he still loves me for who I am and blesses me abundantly and has allowed me to discover you guys and uh, be a part of this amazing community. And so I just want to firstly say thank you to him, but also to you guys for just being a part of this and uh, being encouraging and um, hanging out with me even over on Inside the Booth. I do use, um, do use, I am on an additional podcast every Sunday and Tuesday um, on nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Inside the Booth. You may have uh, caught me there a couple of times and hanging out with Dan, David, and Matthew. We do movie reviews. And uh, this coming Sunday, we're having a rumble review where we're going to be talking about James Cameron films. And we're going to be deciding which are better out of, we're only picking three. There's so many James Cameron films. We're picking three and we're going to decide which ones we think are the better, are the best of James Cameron. And so hopefully you come out and hang out with us. You can find me and Inside the Booth on Twitter uh, I'm just dreaming Tabitha and you can find inside the booth at inside the booth. Pretty simple, but you can find me on Instagram, Etsy, and even on Patreon. So if you want to come over and help support feed the artist, as I always tell people, because you know, that stereotype of uh, artists always being hungry. I kind of always am though. I really am the embodiment of, <laughs> of artists, but yeah. Um, Anyway, again, thank you so much for being here. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. Ring the little notification bell. I do not know quite yet when I'll be doing my next live stream. I have somebody in mind that I'm going to be reaching out to, and I hopefully this person will be willing to come on and we can hang out and do cool stuff. But uh, I don't know. If you guys enjoyed this, let me know. Leave a, leave a comment. Like, Is this something that you wouldn't mind seeing more of? Do you have some people that you think would be really cool to be on the channel and draw and stuff like that. They don't even have to be an artist. They could just be the average Joe, but maybe somebody you think would be interesting to see, learn how to paint something. Just let me know. I'd love to hear from it. And uh, I do have some other videos that are not live streams. Uh, here's something to eat. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm getting hungry there. <laughs> it's, it is lunchtime. Um, see you, Dax. I don't quite know if I'll be there just yet, if not for the whole thing tonight on Legion's stream. Um, I have some stuff I need to work on, but I'm going to try, try to be there for a little bit. And then uh, thank you for saying you like this or you love this. And R2 says he does more, do more of this. That's excellent. Well, thank you so much. That makes me happy. Um, and all of that oh, cool yeah. stuff. Cool. Anyway. And Kaylee says, I love seeing it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Honestly, I didn't expect this to go three hours. And I was like, nobody's going to hang out that long. So this is really special for me. Thank you. It's like Christmas today. So, Phil, how's it going? Did you finish off? Oh, yeah. Cool, cool. All right. So, like I said, it, everything consistent. So just like what we did with the sword, I'm going to take, I'm, I still have black in my brush, but I'm going to get a little bit more. And then I need to get some new white on my palette since I made all kinds of brown and beige. It. So here we go. Get some white, just a wee bit. And I'm going to stroke backwards. Now, I don't know what kind of design you did with yours, Phil. So you, if you did like a mountain or something like that, just kind of like our little uh, knee pads and stuff like that, because it's more of an organic kind of material that um, it's okay if it's kind of imperfect. I'm just kind of craggly. You know, uh, Dawn, yes, my Etsy store is back up. 
It is. I've got some cool stuff coming. I've got some new artwork that'll be coming to the art uh, the store as well. Right now, my newest thing uh, is my Gina Carano Do Not Comply t-shirts and stickers. And I'm going to be making a print of that here soon. And I've got some Stargate and some Star Wars stuff going on up there as well. So always, always creating. And Mrs. R2 said she enjoys this. I'm glad. Thank you. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, I enjoy this, too. Like, as a person who, like, has been doing this with you, it it is a really fulfilling experience, for sure. Well, and, you know, I I wasn't really aware of anybody else that does this. There might be, because, of course, the Internet is so vast, and there's so many content creators. But I kind of did a search, and I couldn't really find anybody else who has somebody brought onto their channel to try to learn how to do this. So I just, you know, figured I'd try something else, you know? Like, what is it they're always saying? And Jay says that a lot too. Just do what you want to do, you know? And so, I mean, I already talk movies on Inside the Booth, and I don't want to always do that. But um, I don't mind talking about it from time to time. This way, you can kind of talk about anything you really want to. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we've, we've talked about breakfast, pizza, <laughs> all kinds of stuff <laughs> and chris yeah, says drawing a bavarian background now well that's cool i bet that's gonna be beautiful yeah i was going to highlight that too because i've seen some of your work christopher you're a pretty I've good seen artist. Stuff on oh. instagram he's a really good artist too so there we go i'm just gonna leave this like so, I don't want to overdo it i do not want my little thing down here at the bottom to overshadow and overpower my turtle here at the top. I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And then what's really, really important, Phil, whenever you do finish off is to sign your artwork in some way, right? And so some people like doing it with their paintbrush or you have people like me that are not good at it and they do it with a pencil or excuse me, would do it with a pen. I'm gonna give it a go with my paintbrush Take just a little bit of paint over here. I tend to always sign on this side. I'll just do my... You don't have to do it over here. I like to typically, I like to hide my initials when I do a painting. I don't want it to take away from my artwork, but because I'm not necessarily going to put this on my wall or anything, I don't really care. But... Uh, I always encourage people to put the date on there as well so they can go back and look at what they did. Um, yeah, you can put this in the corner. I've known some people to literally scrawl it right in the middle of their painting. I knew one lady that every time she signed her painting, she would dip her pinky in bright pink paint and put it somewhere in the painting, and that was how she did that. Oh, that's so, interesting. Tabitha, are you going to do a giveaway for that painting? I hadn't intended on doing that but i mean if somebody wants my because in comparison i mean here's my original here's this one if somebody wants my original i'm happy <laughs> to, to give it to them um you know that's fine because uh, i i don't mind teenage mutant ninja turtles but they're not exactly my favoriteest thing of all time yeah, you would think me having Ninja Turtle on my name, I will cover more Ninja Turtle stuff on my channel. R2, you want this? <laughs> He's like, I do. I mean, sure, I'll I'll send it to you if you want it. I'm happy to do that. Let me see here. Thank oh, yeah, and uh, thanks again for those stickers, R2. I really do dig them. Did you finish your artwork, Phil? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. Everybody, attention, please. I'm going to put Phil on the spotlight here. The grand reveal, the moment that we've all been waiting for. <laughs> oh, and you did words. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, my goodness. It does look <laughs> like he's on top of a building. That's so cute. I think they did TCRI. And for those of you who knows, it's the uh, building where created that mutagen that turned Leo, uh, the four turtles and Splinter into the human-sized uh, creatures that they come out to be. 
Oh my gosh. I love that you put your own spin on. See, this is what I'm saying, people. And I love the letters. I love when people put their own flair. Like I tell you what to do, right? I instruct you on what we're trying to do, but you're the one that gets to add to the story and tell your own story. And I am so excited. That's so cool. You have a, a whole story for your painting. That is and so I great. And I love your letters. Oh, I am not good at letters. So that Leonardo looks fantastic. I mean, that looks like a legitimate font, which is really cool. It should exist. Oh, it's so cool. Look closer to the Mirage for comic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the Mirage so comics. Well, so, Phil, of course, I always tell my students that whenever we're done painting, when the stream is over, we're going to have to make sure that we wash our brushes properly with some warm water and soap. And what's really important is that we squeeze out the excess water according to the shape of the brush. So that way it dries the way that it was made. So it's prepped and ready for all of our future needs because bristles are our friends. And we would never let our friends sit in paint to harden and dry and become useless. It's just not what friends would do. But oh my gosh, I am so, so glad that you did this today and hung out with me. I'm so glad all these other people did. That was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And I love what you did. I love that there was a story behind it. See, it's just great. It's fantastic. Um, and all that, hey, please be sure yeah, to take a picture This has been of like it. one of my favorite screens. Oh, great, great, great. Oh, yeah, I will. Oh. Yeah, be, uh, be sure to yeah take a picture of it and either post it on Twitter and tag me or send it to me and I'll tag it. Like, that'd be so great. Um, it'd be great if you could get a picture of yourself holding up your painting. I would love it. Like, one, a close-up, and then one of you holding your painting, if you don't mind. That would be so great. My first YouTube student. So great. So proud. <laughs> Well, so guys, yeah, be sure to follow uh, Phil um, and his channel if you have it. The link's in the description below. And you can also find him on Twitter and on Instagram. Same thing with me. And um, all that goodness, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. This was incredibly fun. And I'll let you know when I plan to do another one and uh, all that good stuff. So Phil, any last words before we head out? Oh, you're muted. So there's that. Hang on. Let me see if I can unmute you. I can't unmute you. Feels great at what being like a silent film. Like he's awesome. It's not unmuting. I don't know what the deal is. It, it, it's still muted, Phil, and I'm not allowed to unmute you. <laughs> oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I was just going to say subscribe to this awesome person. Uh, it was amazing. It was like one of my favorite streams of all time doing. And I want to thank you for uh, having me on. It's an honor to be your first guest and uh, being able to uh, learn how to draw or paint. It was really fun. And you guys can find me on uh, as Phil TMNT on YouTube and uh, Twitter. And uh, Phil the Key. Bade uh, Master on um, Instagram, which I need to change that username <laughs> to Blade. But, uh, but yeah, it was an amazing stream, and thank you. Thank you. Well, guys, have a fantastic rest of the day, and I uh, hope you all enjoy your week weekend. Thank you so much for spending the majority of the morning with us. But until next time, goodbye.